the trapping going back to 1966. The end zones are the same design where the Dolphins first got going back in the Orange Bowl. It's an AFL expansion team. The old uniforms, the throwbacks are out for Miami here tonight. You'll see the offense and their throwbacks on the field. First, the Giants won the toss to further the option to the second half. So Jarvis Landry goes back for the kickoff and we'll see him on offense as well. I know it's been very warm, unseasonably warm, where Indomit and Sue used to play in the Midwest, or where the Giants are from up in the East Coast, but it's still Miami hot here in mid-December. 76 degrees tonight, and the humidity is 85%. The very slight chance of rain, you never know here in South Florida. Josh Brown, who missed the field goal at the end of the Giants' overtime loss to the Jets last Sunday, set to kick it off. And Jarvis Landry along with Damian Williams back deep to receive for the Dolphins. A ton of ex-New Yorkers live down here, so you're going to hear a lot of Giants fans cheering as the night goes on. There's no return for Landry. And the Dolphins will take over at the 20-yard line. Say it with me. Let's get it right. It's Ryan Tannehill, not Tanny Hill. Tannehill's their quarterback. He's been their quarterback since they drafted him in 2012. And, John, he's got the talent in your mind to do it. Let's watch what he does here against the Giants tonight. We got a new offensive coordinator, Mike, Zach Taylor, and Tannehill has had more input in the game plan. You're going to see him more involved at the line of scrimmage. Expect him to use his legs more tonight with the zone read. Zach was the quarterback coach. He's 32 years old, played quarterback in Nebraska. Last week was the first time he called plays in the NFL. They were heavy run based. Looking for more balance tonight. Tannehill first pass complete. Jordan Cameron, the tight end. Gain of 11 on a first down for Miami in front of Greg Dahl. Told you about Tannehill. Guys protecting him need to do a good job. Snaps have been an issue during the year. Watch Pouncey closely, and that right tackle Jason Fox, a weak point as well. Handling the ball to two tight ends. Devontae Parker stepped up. Touchdown last week. Landry ready to do some big-time stuff uh, opposite his old buddy Odell Beckham Jr. And the running back, Lamar Miller, very good back. Here he goes. His first carry is a gain of about six yards. John, I know you were very excited about what Miller has been able to do his first four years in the league. Well, he finally got an opportunity last week to show what he can do, Mike. They gave it to him 20 times. He had over 100 yards against a very good Raven front. He can catch the football. I like that Zach Taylor, the new offensive coordinator, is featuring Miller. Good back. Sims, the tight end, came in motion. He's got the ball. He lost the ball. Can the Giants get on it? They kicked it. They booted it. They fell on it. Knocked out by Landon Collins. And I think Jason Pierre-Paul has his second consecutive week with a fumble recovery. Excuse me, Mike. That is exactly what the Giants needed early. A signature play from their defense. Beautiful hit. Helmet right on a ball by Landon Collins, the rookie out of Alabama. Is a catch, fumble. And that ball is out, first down, New York. First down. And that's the first time after a reception running with the ball, the Dolphins have fumbled this year. They were the only team in the league to hang on to all their receptions and not fumble it. They give it up there. Big hit by Collins. And 11, catch 11 on the year for Sims. Turns into a turnover, and Eli Manning and the Giants take over in great field position. Rashad Jennings starts that carousel of Giants backs. Eli from the 36, out quick to Reuben Randall. Will he get going tonight? Gain him just over six yards. Eli Manning keeps throwing since that rookie year, 2004 in November, when he took over for Kurt Warner. All the starts, 180 in a row, longest active, not just for quarterbacks, but anybody in the league. Top 10 all-time in touchdown passes. Off to the good start here, getting it to Will Ty, his tight end. Back-to-back -back completions get the Giants a first down, John. Expect a lot of quick throws from Eli Manning tonight. This offensive line has struggled, and he knows the Dolphins have a very good pass rush. They want to use this no-huddle offense, Mike, to try to wear out Indomitian Sue and these pass rushers of the Dolphins. They don't have much depth. Toss Jennings surfaces for about two yards. And Derek Shelby 
made the tackle there. I mentioned the carousel of backs. Rashad Jennings, Andre Williams, Shane Vereen, Orleans Darkwa. You see them all. The question is, can anybody get in a rhythm and do something to earn the hot hand and stay on the field? One of these backs has to distinguish himself, and they won't come off the field. Eli Manning giving instructions to Will Ty, the first-year tight end. Second and seven, a draw right into the waiting arms of Indulik and Sue. Big loss on the play. Offensive line has got to block better. And Indomitian and Sue, number 93 at defensive tackle, beats John Jerry with ease. All the injuries have affected the offensive line. Jerry has not played well at right guard, and he's in for a long night against the Pro Bowler Sue. John, the big question coming in, would Eric Flowers be playing for the Giants at left tackle with his ankle injury? He is in there to start. And these are the downs where you need him. Olivier Vernon goes up against him on third and a dozen. Eli with time is caught by Dwayne Harris, who will be three yards short of the first down. And Tom Coughlin sends the field goal unit out. We just said it in the pregame. Miami is going to come after Eli with a lot of different looks. The double-A package, two linebackers between the center and the guard. They're going to mix up their looks. That time they played a zone coverage and they're off the field. Here's Josh Brown. And, John, the big deal here is Danny Aiken, the long snapper. Zach Diossi, nine years, 141 games on IR. First snap is a good one from the former Patriot snapper, Aiken. And Josh Brown gives us the first points of the game. Collins made the hit. Deion Sims lost the ball. Leads to an opening field goal for the Giants. South Florida scene as we head towards Christmas time. And you get a look at our coverage tonight from Spider Cam, which is brought to you by Direct TV. Sun Life Stadium remodel. I've been here a lot over the years. This place looks different. It looks great, and there's more on the horizon. Good setting. Come watch a football game. Dolphins turnover turns into a Giants field goal. And Landry gets a running start from six deep. Jarvis Landry picking up blocks. Brought down across the 25-yard line. Cooper Taylor and Landon Collins on the tackle. Let's see if the Big names on the Miami offense can get it going in drive two. Jason Pierre Paul played his best game of the season against the Jets. He's coming back from the mental mental and physical issues with that fireworks accident on July 4th, lining up at his old defensive end position. He's going up against the right tackle, Jason Fox. Drive starts with 26. To swing it out to get into the hands of Landry. They do this a lot. But Jarvis Landry worked the sideline to get a first down. Go back to JPP, Mike. This is a new defense. Don't forget that. Steve Spagnola just got here. He has to learn the defense. He had no training camp. And he's learning how to play with that club on his right hand. Mike, this is a real challenge. Hand usage, grip strength have been a big part of his success. He's got to learn how to play again with the limitations in that right hand. Gain of 16 to Landry, right back to him. This time the gain is minimal. Tied up by Dominique Rogers Cromartie. Well, that's this offense. That's the number one thing they told us they wanted to do tonight was throw the ball on the perimeter, make the Giants defend the entire field. They don't tackle well, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. They want Landry to catch as many balls as possible on the edge. He's excellent after the catch. And Mike, he had just two catches last week for five yards. He's having a problem with his shoe. He comes off the former Packer, Greg Jennings, comes in for second and eight. Miller left, and they cut it back inside, but Kuhn was waiting just to get a gain of two as Marcus Kuhn joins that giant defense up front with Pierre Paul and Ayers and Cullen Jenkins. And we've gotten a lot of sacks this year. Jasper Brinkley's the third option now at middle linebacker. Hertzlick and JT Thomas helping out as well. In the secondary, tackling will be important with Amukamara and Rogers Cavardi on the corners. Craig Dahl starts again for Brandon Merriweather. You've also already seen 
what Landon Collins can do. Big hit. Forced the turnover on the Dolphins' opening drive. Steve Spagnuolo's team's given up way too many yards. Not the personnel to work with that some others have. But here comes pressure from Collins on third and six. He can't get there, and in the middle of the field, it's Jordan Cameron for a first down at the 37-yard line, a gain of 17. What an impressive play by Tannehill. They bring Collins on a blitz, left side of your screen. He's going to be unaccounted for. Watch Tannehill take off to his right, keep his vision downfield, and throw a beautiful pass to his tight end, Cameron, for the first down. Tannehill, a lot of mobility, X receiver at Texas A&M. They need to get more from him moving. Miller comes over to the left. The fake over the top behind Landry and incomplete as Landry was being covered by the nickel, Trevin Wade. You know, Mike, in this offense, some of the drops are compromising. Ryan Tannehill has to fake the ball in the shotgun, and it causes some inaccuracy. And that time the ball looked like it was tipped by yeah. defensive tackle Kerry Wynn. Right, 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 right. Giants are missing Demontre Moore, who the team cut this week. So that's a guy who's played a bunch for them, especially the last week. Miller on the carry for Miami, getting close to field goal range at the 32-yard line. So Demontre Moore had three sacks. Big deal, you say? No, we're in December. That's three of the 15 the Giants have had all year. And Moore played his most snaps last week for Tom Coughlin in a unique package. The Giants going to miss his presence here as they cut him this week. They certainly are. Moore was a guy that could take off and catch some of these scrambling quarterbacks. This is an area that the Dolphins do not excel at. Converting on third down. Let's see if the Giants can mount a pass rush. You may have heard, by the way, Moore signed with the Dolphins, but that won't be official till tomorrow. It's not part of the Miami effort here tonight. Landry slipped and fell. Tannehill goes to him anyway. He gets there. Did not get a knee down. Leaned forward and got the first down. And the Giants are questioning. Oh, let's see, maybe short. Maybe they're going to mark him just short. The Giants are questioning if he touched down at the 29-yard line as Trevin Wade was trying to pull him down. It is fourth down, says Craig Burlstead. Well, Miami's going to go for this, and you see Jarvis Landry, the strength that he Whoa. has. His body reached forward. Now you see a knee, shin, elbow, anything of the sort. Nothing comes down. He's lying on Wade there, but as he reaches the ball forward, he loses the handle. So the arm got out to the spot to gain for the first down, but the ball did not. So at the 27-yard line, it's going to be fourth and inches. And they'll go and run it with Miller for the first down at the 26-yard line. I like that. That shows Dan Campbell at his best. He wants to run the football behind Pouncey and Turner at right guard. They're going to slam Lamar Miller right into the teeth of this giant front. Good surge. Good finish by Lamar Miller that sets up Miami just outside the red zone. Miller gets a break. Damian Williams, second-year man out of Oklahoma, checks in. Santa Hill from the 26, over the top, too tall, and incomplete for Sims. It'll be second down. John, think back to when the Dolphins won the Super Bowls. The two Super Bowl titles, 72 and 73 season. Those games, they threw a total of 18 passes in two games combined. But Dan Campbell, it was almost like that. They, they threw only 19 passes last week. He is trying to set that physical tone of a former Giant drafted tight end. What's an identity? I mean, the Dolphins ran the ball less than any team in the foot in, in the league, Mike. He wants to get a physical identity. The only way to do that is run the rock. Colin Jenkins, obviously unhappy that he was caught on the other side of the line. Encroachment. Defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty, second out. Craig Rolstead is our referee tonight. What do you think of Campbell, John? We talked to him. It's an odd situation. 39, you're a tight end coach. Now you get a chance to be a head coach for 12 games to try to earn a job. I like Campbell. He's shown a lot of guts. He's made some tough changes on his coaching staff. And like I said earlier, Mike, he has given the Dolphins a physical identity on offense by running the football, and they're playing harder than I've seen them play in the last few weeks. 
players have had very positive comments about Dan Campbell. They like playing for him. Four and four since he took over for Joe Philbin. And stopped the game to pick up the flag that was thrown. Tannehill keeping here. Gets the first down inside the 15-yard line. And at the 14th. A lot of deception in this offense. You see Jordan Cameron come across the formation. It almost looks like he's going to block the defensive end, but he bluffs him. And Tannehill reads Jason Pierre-Paul. That's what I want to see from Tannehill. He had over 700 yards rushing in his first few years, only 60 this year. They need to get more yardage from Tannehill on the ground. Nice work. It's the fourth time all year he's run for a first down. He's got the skills and the wheels to do it more. Giants are blitzing the safeties. May Burnham here. Miller, Enzo, Miami touchdown. Good back. This kid can play. Had over 1,000 yards last year. He can make long runs, Mike. But as we said in the pregame, the New York Giants just missed too many tackles. That time, J.T. Thomas, number 55, feels the stiff arm of Lamar Miller. You see him coming on the backside. Not good. This depleted linebacker core of the Giants has had a hard time tackling in one-on-one -on -one situations, and Lamar Miller shows his stuff. Nice downfield block, too, by the rookie wide receiver, Devontae Parker. Helping keep the corner out of the tackle. Andrew Franks. Rookie kicker out of RPI. But also gets to talk about Rensselaer here from Polytechnic Institute. In Troy, New York, but he banks through the extra point. Miami's got the lead 7-3. Lamar Miller has his sixth touchdown run of the year. In the playoff chase, Saints and Lions next week, 8:15 Eastern, from the Superdome. Andrew Frank's kick through the uprights. The Giants will take over at the 20-yard line, and that means Eli and Odell, the two best Giants on their roster. Let's see if Beckham can start the meter running towards the 100-yard game tonight. Yes, Miami fans, it is the first quarter, and your team has seven points. The Dolphins, in their last six games combined, only three first quarter points. So they get off to the good start. Now see how the Giants can respond. Their second drive, Andre Williams is the back. Manning, George Beckham, who slipped coming out of his break, but comes back and makes the 12-yard catch. First down, Odell Beckham Jr. Well, he's been the only threat the Giants have had in recent weeks. He's going to run a comeback. Watch him get out of his break. Catch the football, track the sideline. They're going to look to him as many times as they can. And Grimes has got to step up his play. The veteran Pro Bowl corner has struggled in recent weeks. From the 32, Williams left. No push. Loss of a yard. Back by Michael Thomas, the safety. So blocking up front, Flowers. We're going to watch him closely with his left ankle injury. Pugh, the guard. Richburg has been in center the last few weeks. Newhouse playing with a back injury for the Giants. Will Ty have already seen the tight end. Four different backs. Vereen in those passing situations like right now. Will somebody step up with Beckham? Randall, Harris, Hakeem Nixon's back with the Giants now. They need some passenger to ride along on the Odell Beckham train as a receiver. Loss of one, second and 11. And Eli completes it to Dwayne Harris, who gets the 41-yard line. Yard shy of the first down. It'll be third and a yard for the Giants. Dwayne Harris has been an important New York Giant. He's in the slot where they had hoped to have Victor Cruz. Preston Parker was released, and now it's Harris in the slot, doing some good things as a receiver and a returner. And here they are, Mike, in short yardage, an area where the Giants have been just over 50%. See the numbers there, how bad the Giants have been in these situations. Marines the back, Ty the tight end is leading for him, not even close. Bryce McCain knocks him back, and the Giants' struggles on third and a yard continue. Just don't know what some of these running plays are. They have Will Ty at fullback, and you're going to see on the bottom of your screen from nowhere, number 24, McCain, unblocked, stuffed, Shane Vereen for nothing. 
Sometimes a shotgun-driven offense, you don't get that power right. block. There's nothing there at all. We mentioned him on the field goal attempt. The Giants with a new long snapper after Zach Diossi goes on IR. First punt snap for Danny Aiken. Back to Brad Wake. Ozzy kicks it away. Short, 35 yards off the kick. They're caught by Landry at the 24. Dolphins take over, 3-0-1 to go. Steven Ross has been the majority owner since 2009, his eighth season. He's so desperate to get to the right. Hoped that it would be successful with Joe Philbin entering this season. But after one and three start, Philbin fired. Dan Campbell takes over. A few days later, he changed out to the defensive coordinator from Coyle to Lou Anarumo. And then, coming into the game two weeks ago, Zach Taylor becomes the play caller, replacing Bill Lazor. Because Dan Campbell wanted, as you said, John, his imprints his stamp, some definition of what Dolphin football is about. And go back to a guy who was a tight end drafted by the Giants, Dan Campbell. He wants physical football to help not have Tannehill throw it 50, 55 times a game. Here's keeping on the design run, and the zone read gets a dozen, and using the full arsenal of his athletic ability there. And I go back to Dan Campbell, Mike. It's tough when you get this job at midstream he's made some tough changes on his coaching staff he's made scheme changes he's changed the attitude here he's made a number of personnel changes and what I like the most about Campbell is I've seen the results change and if I'm Steven Ross watching this I'm gonna give him strong consideration at the end of this season it's down game to get out to the 37 yard line and Tannehill throws middle of the field for Sims he bobbled it and couldn't bring it down if he would have been able to secure that juggle, he was going home. Yeah, Sims needs to catch that football. He fumbled earlier in the game. That time, he's got to go up strong with two hands and snatch the football and bring it back to his body. That's a play Sims has to make in this league. Third-year man from Michigan State factored in a lot here in this opening quarter. About 24 balls last year, just 10 with one touchdown this season. Trying to feature Jordan Cameron and Deion Sims with a couple of tight ends here. Second and 10, backfield empty, time for Tannehill. Landry stops on a dime. And he's thrown to the ground by Marcus Kuhn, limiting the game to about five. What is Jarvis Landry? When you study him, he's a running back. He's a wide receiver. Here he is coming out of the backfield, running an option route. You have to account for him on every snap. I've seen him throw passes. He's a smart football player, extremely tough, but he does not run a standard route tree at all. Closing in on the numbers from that rookie season, one of the many outstanding rookie receivers in 20. 14 who are having good year twos as well backfield empty again third and five Tannehill putting it up top for the running back Damian Williams just a step away from going all the way as Pierre Paul was bearing down on the quarterback it's one of those revealing formations you line a running back up as a wide receiver and you see him one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker you look off the free safety and you give him a shot deep and Tannehill, who's well protected, has to make this throw. But I go back to Deion Sims. He had a chance. That's wide open. Zach Taylor, the offensive coordinator, is calling some good plays, Mike. Matt Dar, rookie punter, kicking it away. Harris gets the 48-yard kick at the 10. Wayne gets a block. Terrific punt returner slipped down. Limited it was his return to 20, but he was a step away from a long run. 28 yards of net. Odell Beckham Jr. in this Giants offense comes out. Odell was battling a cold. Yeah. We saw him before uh, the game yesterday. He was telling us how he's been so excited for this week to face his old friend Jarvis Landry. And of course, of all weeks, He's battled a little bit of a cold, a little bit of an injury, so it hasn't been the perfect preparation leading up to this matchup. The 30-yard line is shot. Jennings with a run up the middle. Okay, nine. Koamisi. 
make the tackle. You know, Landry and Beckham, both at LSU. They talk about this hidden tape. Our Monday Night Crew is going to dig this out. You knew our gang would get it done. Best in the business. How about these catches in practice? These are circus one-handed catches. These two receivers, Beckham and Landry, are famous for this. Did you see that? <laughs> Look at this. Jennings up the middle. Unblocked, untouched. Till he gets to the Dolphins side at the 40-yard line where Michael Thomas made the tackle after a gain of 21. Well, the Dolphins just don't defend the run. You see number 90 at nose tackle, Earl Mitchell, coming back from a calf injury. Weston Richburg does an excellent job blocking back. It creates a lane for Jennings, and back-to-back -back runs have the Giants in good field position. Jennings' longest run since week one. Now open it to Randall, another LSU receiver. Inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. 23 on that one. Great play selection. You get the running game going, you run a play action pass, the linebacker steps up and you shoot a bullet right behind them. Beautiful. Play selection by Ben McAdoo, the offensive coordinator. Let's see if the Giants can rev up their red zone offense. It's been brutal lately. One more in before the end of the quarter. Jennings nowhere to go. Sue grabs him, brings him down, and brings the quarter to an end. Lamar Miller ran a touchdown in. The Dolphin turnover became a giant field goal. Big Blue going for the lead after one. Giants in the red zone for the first time tonight to start the second quarter. You heard John say how brutal they've been. Worst in the league touchdown percentage. Will tie the tight end. He'll keep his feet to the 12-yard line. Gain of six. Rashad Jones, safety, who's playing very well this year on the tackle. is Ben McAdoo, the Giants' offensive coordinator. And he knows they have to find a way to get touchdowns. They've turned it over six times in the red zone. They've had too many penalties. They haven't run the ball. But most importantly, they haven't converted these third-down situations in tight. Team Knicks, top of the screen. Randall and Beckham, same side. Will tie into pickup that inside pressure if it comes. Quick to Beckham, first down Giants at the six. Giovanni Jenkins the tackle. Credit Eli Manning, he saw that double A gap blitz. He audibled, he brought his tight end into the backfield to get the protection that he needed. And he threw the quick strike to Beckham who was in the slot for a huge first down. That's the one thing about Eli Manning you see every week. Preparation that he applies in the most critical of situations. Eli's hit all eight, calling Odell back tight as Jennings runs, trying to bounce it away, and wrapped up by Jenkins to minimize the game. No game. Well, Odell Beckham's going to have to be a better blocker than that when Rashad Jones is hanging around the line of scrimmage. You got to come in short motion when you're a wide receiver in these one-back sets and block these safeties. Don't be surprised if Eli Manning doesn't come back with a play-action pass. They're known to do that when they get some aggressive underneath coverage. Brent Grimes covering Beckham, top of the screen. Second and goal, Manning looked that way, it was covered. Back in the middle, it's knocked down. Pass incomplete, and Dominican Sue, the highest-paid defensive player in NFL history. Knocked it down. Mike, that's a seventh batted ball by Sue. Number 93, right side of your screen. The Dolphins have rejected 16 passes. And Indomitian Sue knows that ball's coming out quick. I might not get there, but I can still make my presence felt. Third and goal. Last four drives inside the 10-yard line. Giants haven't scored a touchdown. Third and goal. Vereen in close to help. Manning end zone. Touchdown. Ruben Randall puts the Giants on top. That has to excite head coach Tom Coughlin. He's been looking for Ruben Randall for the last six or seven weeks. Who else is going to step up and compliment Odell Beckham? In the slot, Randall uncovers against this red zone zone coverage for six. Excellent work by Eli. Two third down conversions. And they needed red zone success in the worst way. 
and a whole bunch of things that will never show up in stats or QBR. All the stuff he did at the line of scrimmage there. Even when Beckham didn't execute for him, he brought him in. Solid job by Eli on the drive. Josh Brown adds the extra point. The Giants respond to the Miami touchdown with one of their own. New York leads 10-7. And all the stars, the Dolphins' 50th season all-time team. You saw Don Shula there. They had a great event Friday night at a hotel not too far from here. And many of those folks on hand here tonight, including Dan Marino, decade ago to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, sitting amongst the Dolphin brass. Boy, they can roll out some great tradition here for those glory years. They sure were. I was at the lobby with Mark Clayton, A.J. Dewey. They were all around. Mercury Morris. Don Shula, what a coach. What a job he did assembling one of the all-time great dynasties. Perhaps the best ever. Street address of this stadium is 347 Don Shula Drive. To recognize that magic number for the winningest coach in NFL history. Landry catches it over his head from four deep. Hits it hard. Landry turned around by Collins. Chased by Dahl. Finally out of bounds shy of the 35-yard line. Speaking of Dan Marino, Monday Night Football, he's down here just off of South Beach very often. Dan Marino, most passing yards on Monday Night Football, ahead of Brett Favre by just under 600. You talk about touchdown passes thrown on Monday nights. Marino, 74, Favre 69, 1-2 on the list. During those days, they didn't play in cold weather climbs very often in December, so the Dolphins were on Monday night as a regular staple in, Den in December. And Dan was great any time of the year, but helped him to those Monday night records. Tannehill from the 33, didn't like what he saw on the right. Comes back left and completes it to Greg Jennings, former Packer, seven shot, seven yard gain, just shy of the 40 yard line. And Mike, this defensive coordinator for the Giants, Steve Spagnola, blitzing a lot. This time it's Collins again. Lamar Miller makes the pickup, and it allows Tannehill to get to an alternate receiver. But Spagnolo knows he's got to make something happen with blitzes to help this pass rush that just can't get there with four men. But 80! But hot! Second and three. It looks like Pouncey was the only one there on that snap count in the gain of two for Miller's just shy of that first down. I'll take a look at JPP so far, Mike, playing left defensive end. You see that cast he's wearing on his right hand. He's able to recover this fumble. He had a nice inside move that almost got home. No sacks yet, but he does have a fumble recover, and he's been disruptive. In this heat, it'd be interesting to watch him. Remember, he did not have a training camp. Ajayi is the back to toss to him and lose the tackle of Collins. Reaches forward and looks like he'll have the first down at the 43-yard line. Jay Ajayi, the running back out of Boise State in the fifth round this year. Well, it's another missed tackle, Mike. You're landing Collins. You're unblocked as a strong safety. You're off the field. Keep your head up and make this tackle in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's the second missed tackle that's really hurt my uh, New York. Great effort from Ajayi, too. Kenny Stills on the edge gets two yards in front of Dominique rogers Cromartie. A lot of quick passes from Ryan Tannehill. They want to wear the giant defense out. Spread them out, make them defend the entire width of the field, and force them to make tackles. Play action. Well protected, and the cross for Jarvis Landry. Still going, Landry now down at the 40. He lost his shoe again. He is struggling with uh, you know, shoes here tonight. Running out of them, but he's got another first down. This is a deep cross by Landry. They eliminate the underneath coverage with the fake. And Landry to the corner, I should say, wide open. First down, Miami. Game of 17, fifth grab of the night. Pedal to the metal here. Tannehill shot down field incomplete. Intended for Devontae Parker, the rookie wide receiver. Rashard Matthews had a nice season for this Miami team as the other receiver. But he has a rib injury. He's inactive for the second straight week. And Johnson opportunity for this rookie out of Louisville to step up. Only well, scored touchdowns in the last two weeks. This is just a straight go ball. I think he fooled his quarterback. 
You run that go route, you want to slip that defender to the outside, not the inside. Miller got out of the tackle from Jason Pierre oh, Paul, oh. and he's going to go to the end zone for a touchdown. Pierre Paul had one arm, he couldn't get that other arm to wrap him, and Miller takes it 38 yards for the score. Can't coach that. This tackles, and Lamar Miller is a bad combination for the Giants. Watch Lamar Miller accept this inside handoff and not only score, but how many Giants does he make miss? How about that stop and start quickness? I like this clicker, Mike. Watch this. Incredible stop and start quickness and north-south home run speed from Lamar Miller, the ex-Miami Hurricane. And I'm sure the new Canes coach, Mark Rick, is saying, let's get some more backs like that. <laughs> what a run by Miller. Seven touchdowns on the season. Two in the first two quarters tonight. As your Franks adds the extra point, we just showed you that clip from Jason Pierre-Paul and the missed tackles by the Giants. All in the same breath on this one. It's a Dolphins touchdown for Miller. JPP couldn't get to him. Miller goes all the way. Miami's up four. John, one of your points all week as we prepare for this game, the inability to tackle. You can put them in the right position. they got to make plays, and the Giants are not. 59 yards after missed tackles tonight and a couple of touchdowns here to make it 14-10. Strong leg on Franks. Knocks it right back to the uprights again. Well, take a look at the missed tackles, Mike. On the first touchdown, Lamar Miller stiff arms J.T. Thomas in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Then it's third and one. Landon Collins is unblocked for a two-yard loss. Can't get it done. And then J.P.P. and a host of other Giants can't bring Miller down. And it has the Giants behind by four. And Eli Manning's got to keep his gas pedal down. They're going to have to outscore Miami, Mike. It's a hot, humid night. This might evolve into a high-scoring game as these defenses get worn down. Andre Williams, the back for Manning. His pass caught on the sideline by his old friend, Keen Nix. So Nix comes back here. He was cut by Tennessee in the preseason, played 2014 with the Colts. Before that, five years with the Giants, part of the Super Bowl championship team, Eli Manning. Thrown as often to Nix as any other receiver he's played with. Williams, Sue got a hand on Shelby and Sue bring down Williams for a loss of a couple of yards. But Derek Shelby has become an unsung hero. Here's a counter play, right side of your screen, number 79. Shelby with help from Indomic and Sue. This run defense has been terribly inconsistent all year. You stop the run, you get into these third down situations. Let's see if Miami can turn on their pass rush. 93's fully engaged here tonight. Sue's motor gets running in these national TV games. And he's had an impact first quarter plus. Third and six, Manning throws deflected, and Randall couldn't bring it in. Bryce McCain with an initial hand on it. Three and out Giants. Bryce McCain, a veteran slot corner, read Eli perfectly and did an excellent job batting that ball away intended for Randall. Important three and out to rest that Dolphin defense. And here's Landry, who has been a problem tonight. Brad Wing to kick it away. Out coming right through the middle as Chris McCain didn't get there. The punch is 52. Here's Landry at the sideline. Look at out of bounds in the 34. Return of 10. Dolphins back on the field. Rolling offensively off that last drive. Brian Tannehill, a good start. His team in the loop. Our Monday Night Light South Florida style. We're going U12. Youngsters, the Orange Bowl Youth Football Alliance Championship game was over the weekend. Congratulations to South Miami. The great goes beat the Fort Pierce Seminoles. 
24 0. This is over at Florida International University Stadium campus. Look at those guys, their trophies. The Orange Bowl committee folks do a great job helping out with that. And there they were at the games. They're uh, 12 and unders. A chance to be out on this field and see the players since they got warmed up tonight. The 34 Tannehill throws to Landry. Well read from the jump by Cooper Taylor. The safety forces a loss of three. That's what the Giants have to do. One on one space tackles and Cooper Taylor a safety who really was on the practice squad for a while does a nice job recognizing a quick screen and attacking Landry immediately for no game. Opportunity right you take advantage of it Cooper Taylor hadn't played any snaps until week six when he played five of defense played 12 last week so very little time but in the rotation tonight. Tannehill slant caught by Landry. They are wearing him out tonight. Well, Landry complained about not seeing the ball last week when they only threw it 19 times. He may throw his way 19 times in the first half tonight. Yeah, and look at all the substitutions from this giant defense. They are trying to match every situation with the perfect group of players. And they just can't get any pressure on Tannehill. And he's spreading out this giant defense with these no back sets third and five backfield empty for Tannehill Giants rush only three they drop eight but still Sims gets open for the first down in front of the linebacker Jonathan Casillas Giants can't handle a no back offense they've given up over 50 completions and seven touchdowns in a no back offense they continue to rush three men they can't get to the quarterback, and Tannehill sees the defense perfectly. I'm impressed with what I've seen from Tannehill, Mike. All the changes that he's had at offensive coordinator. I'm seeing him do more at the line of scrimmage, and he's even underneath the center more than I've seen him all year. Lady! Lamar Miller in the back from the 47. Flea flicker. Giants very disciplined downfield. They stayed covered. Landry couldn't handle on the sidelines, that hot pass from Tannehill. Credit the Giants defense wow. for not giving in. Well, Landry's got to catch a football. You see all these one-handed catches you showed earlier. That ball is a bullet right between the numbers. Got to make those catches. He lose his shoe again? He did. <laughs> Downfield, he lost his shoe. A great play by Tannehill getting out of trouble. And let's hope he finds his shoe. We need to get those tightened up. That's three times alone Landry's thrown a shoe in the game. Second and ten. Tannehill hit hard. No whistles. That might be a live ball as it comes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. There was no incomplete signal for a forward pass. If it stands as a fumble, it's a loss of seven. The officials discuss as you watch. Watch Colin Jenkins go to work against Dallas Thomas on a spin move. And he punishes Tannehill. Jenkins had a big sack last week. And pass. Okay. Third down. That was an impressive spin move by the veteran Jenkins. It is ruled incomplete pass, as you heard, which saved seven yards. You saw the replay. That's not one you would challenge there because his hand was on the ball, in control of it as it came forward. But to your point, John, those are the kind of hits the Giants need more of. And Tannehill's had too many of, uh, of as this season's gone on. Indeed. So instead of third and 17, it's third and 10. Again, the backfield emptied out. Tannehill slings it to Sims. Got a block from his left tackle, Brandon Albert. Couldn't get the first guy. He's about four yards shy. Cullen Jenkins, Jason Pierre-Paul over there on the stop. Miami punts. I'm impressed with Pierre Paul. This is a screen pass. He's rushing the passer. He recognizes his screen, and he shows great effort and pursuit to bring down Deion Sims short of the first down. I tip my hat to Pierre Paul. He has come back from a lot of adversity, hasn't pouted, hasn't felt sorry for himself, and he's given it all he has. Oh, Giants trying to get one player off the field, see if they have 12 or 11. Fair catch signaled by Harris. See a flag for the moment. 
the officials are discussing. I was trying to do a quick count as that ball was in the air to see if there were. There was no foul on the defense as that there was the 11th man running off the field. Craig Rolstead gives you the answer. That's exactly what happened. So the Giants who've had too many mistakes like that during this season. All clear there. So the Giants will take over on the fair catch their own 10 when we come back. 549 till the half. Good one here in Miami. Bonacani among the Dolphins greats here tonight. Giants take over at their own 10. That was the correct call, by the way. They had it up players on the field. Manning, deep shot, underthrows Beckham, who cannot bring it in. Hit the ground, I believe. Let's see. No, did he catch it? Oh, we got a flag down. Okay, we have a flag down. Offensive pass interference. That's why no signal for catch or no catch from the deep referee on the sideline. Pass interference. Offense, number 13. That can lose half the distance to go. Replay. First down. Well, he's going to be wide open. He's going to run a double move. And he's going to be wide open. He's going to run right by the corner. Grimes. Eli just couldn't get anything on the throw, and you see the push off with the left hand. That's tight. That's a so-so call. I say let him play second down. Actually, first and 15 after the penalty. Didn't look like Grimes was pushed back. Very much. That's the second penalty of the night on the Giants. None on Miami. There's Jennings with a run up the middle, bowling over. It would be tackler for a gain of 11. Miami is struggling with depth at defensive tackle. DeAndre Coleman is in there now, Mike, number 62. He just got signed off the practice squad. Let's double team him with Justin Pugh at left guard. Let's run right at number 62, Coleman, who just got activated and see where his game speed is. Second NFL game, played one with Denver last year. Jennings, who sees the safety, Rashad Jones come down to make the tackle, but Jones gets pushed back, and Jennings guard shot the first down. Let's see what the Giants do in these short yardage situations. They were stuffed earlier on third and one. It's been an Achilles heel of this offense, and under Tom Coughlin for years with Brandon Jacobs, they would pummel you in these short yardage situations. They've got to get this done. Third and one, Jennings trying to find a space. That was a three hard runs in a row from Jennings to get the first down. Well, that's how you get a back in rhythm. Try handing him the football. A lot of young players playing for Miami. Now in their number 97, their second round draft choice. Jordan Phillips out of Oklahoma. Playing a lot of rookies. Right corner, McCain from Memphis, Bobby McCain. A lot of youth out there playing for this Dolphin defense. Let's see if Eli can exploit it. First and ten run up the middle and a gain of five yards by Andre Williams. They would love to see this running game come alive. And you see Eli Manning using his snap count to see the rotation of these two safeties. And if he sees two safeties deep, he's going to run the football repeatedly. Using Bloomsburg as an audible. Pat Flaherty, their offensive line coach, went to East Strasburg University. In that same conference, Sue busting in on Manning. And the whistle reports this play. No penalties against Miami so far. Offside. Defense number 93. Five yard penalty. Second out. What kind of year has Sue had, John? He did not play well early. Coaching change changed his style of play. He doesn't have the sack numbers. He doesn't have the wire to wire impact production, I think, that he had in Detroit, but he still is a problem to block. He's seen a lot of double teams. They lost Cameron Wake, and I think it's affected his overall production. 
Second and one, Manning missed the handoff, recovered by Rashad Jones. Manning and Williams don't connect. Jones takes it to the 25, and the Giants have turned it over deep in their own territory. Changing running backs every play, every series. Ball handling becomes a problem. This is day one training camp execution. I can't explain it. Simple shotgun handoff. Eli looks the ball in, and Williams doesn't have his right arm up. Bad football. And Sets up Miami for a golden opportunity. And, John, this is a Giants team that had fumbled only once on a running play this season and didn't lose that one. Eli was charged with a fumble, a really sloppy aborted play, if you will, at Buffalo on October 4th. So the Giants lose a fumble, and the Dolphins will take over at the 25-yard line. The turnover and its spot just confirmed by the replay booth. So they're ready for play. Gives Tannehill a shot here to extend the lead. Ajayi, the back, turns the corner on the right and gains five yards. Six foot, 230 yards. Big back John who started the season with a rib injury, so he's put on that injured reserve designated to return. He's come back and done a nice job so far. He has, and he can catch a football. But I like what Tannehill just did there, Mike. He audible. And I'm seeing Tannehill do more of this than he has done in previous years and i think it's something that he has to do to become a great quarterback and take his game to another level jay runs right no gain there as he is stopped george selby on the tackle he couldn't they didn't have audibles built into the way the offense was as zach taylor has come in they've given him that freedom well bill laser the ex-offensive coordinator didn't have a lot of audibles and I think part of becoming a great quarterback is being able to recognize defenses, use your weekly preparation when we need it, and put our offense in optimum situations. I like the development of Tannehill in the last couple weeks under Zach Taylor. Dolphins up four and driving here at the two-minute warning. Dolphins lead. They're driving the two-minute warning. This is an interesting time here in this month of December for the Dolphins. Stephen Ross had Mike Tannenbaum, former Jets general manager, as a consultant, and then brought him in full-time to run the football operations. He's going to be the one really helping decide if Dan Campbell stays as the head coach or if they do a search. That's why this last month, John, I think will be very interesting to see where the immediate future of the Dolphins go after the goes after this season. No doubt about that, but at least they have Tannenbaum, who has been around. He worked with Bill Parcells. He did some very good things with the New York Jets. And obviously, Mr. Ross trusts him to do his evaluations carefully. There's a lot of great candidates out there, but you don't want to let anybody that's got talent leave your organization. Well, Dan Campbell will get an interview, no matter what happened to these last four games. Certainly would love to walk into that interview and say, hey, I went 8-4 and four in the last 12. Go find me many other teams in the <laughs> NFL who went 8-4 and four in the final 12 games. Miami plays at San Diego. Indianapolis and then New England here to close after this game tonight. So a good record's possible. Third and five, the Giants have shown that safety blitz all night. Here it comes again, and Tannehill gets rid of it. It is caught, but short of the first down is Devontae Parker. The free rusher was George Selby who got in, and Tom Coughlin's going to use his first time out to preserve time for Eli. Well, what are you going to do when it's an all-out blitz? They're going to turn the end man loose. You only have five blockers, Mike, and when the Giants bring six, the end man is unblocked. You have to know that and change the protection, bring somebody in to block, or get to a quick pass where you can get the first down. And let's see if Tannehill's okay, but you can't just line up in a no-back set and expect the Giants to rush three all night and you got to anticipate a blitz and do better than that in the scoring zone. There is in conversation with Zach Taylor, the 32-year-old. Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year at Nebraska and elevated by Dan Campbell a couple of weeks ago to take over the play-calling duties. So it will be a 36-yard field goal attempt for Andrew Franks, who has not attempted many field goals in the last few weeks. None in the last three games. And he knocks that one through to make it 17 to 10. 
I don't even know where Franks is from, Mike. R RPI. Pretty darn good school up in Troy, New York. A lot of engineers there. That's why they're called the engineers. Giant fumble turns into a field goal. Chris Berman standing by at the world headquarters in Bristol for the Toyota halftime. Boomer's final drive will take a peek at uh, the little Max show from the Raiders and the undefeated Panthers. Adam and Mort will be heard from their insider update. Plenty of injuries to update, including the one to Andy Dalton of Cincinnati that has changed, it, changed the scope of the AFC North and the playoff race. All coming up on the Toyota halftime. Frank to the huge leg has not even brought a return into question tonight, so the Giants will take over their own 20. John, Mr. Sue, what has he been up to in this first half? Well, they move him around. Here he is playing left defensive tackle on the outside shoulder of the guard. Then they line him head up on the offensive tackle. Keep watching, he's playing nose tackle. And then he puts his hat in the crack between a center and a guard, and he whips John Jerry for a nice tackle for loss. Obvious passing situations. It's time for Sue and his pass rush to wake up. Two tackles for loss, one pass deflected. Our stat man, Marty Aronoff, tells me the numbers for Sue tonight. Giants, two timeouts in the two minute drill. Eli Manning to Will Ty, gain of five. Eli throwing it very quickly out of respect to this pass rush, and Rashad Jones. Over 100 tackles, four interceptions. He's returned two of them for touchdowns. He's a ball magnet. You better keep an eye on number 20. Five, Manning stepping up, shot downfield. Beckham brought it in. Flag is down. Back by the quarterback. Odell all the way to the 30. If it stands, it's 45 yards. People continue to work Brent Grimes, who has really struggled defending the deep ball. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 50, hitting the quarterback late. It's a 15-yard penalty decked on the end of the play. First down. It makes it a 60-yard gain for the Giants. Just a post route. He runs Grimes down, and Grimes is no match for the speedy Beckham. And Eli Manning threw a beautiful pass. There's Olivier Vernon with a late hit. I didn't see that. They usually give you two steps. And then it's a flag. That was right at that second step. Didn't look like it was a blow to the head. Forcible contact. In any case, it is 60 yards total. When in doubt, they always protect the quarterback. It brings the ball to the 15. And let's see if that struggling red zone offense of the Giants, which did get the touchdown earlier, can tie the game here. Running back's Vereen. He's getting out on a screen. Shane Vereen, 10, first down to five, with a minute 13 to go. And the Giants will let it roll. I'd consider using a timeout if I'm Dan Campbell to give my offense time. Plenty of time. You have all your timeouts left, no sense saving them. First and goal, Giants at the five. Brook in the end zone. Credit Touchdown this, for the rookie. Excuse me, by credit this offensive line, they've done an excellent job against this Dolphin pass rush when they've needed to protect. That time Eli had plenty of time to survey the field and tie a corner route. Nobody covered him. You see Vereen number 34 run into the flat and will tie on a blown coverage is wide open for the go-ahead score. Will Ty started his college career at Florida State. Florida State had a terrific tight end in Nick O'Leary. The extra point is added by Josh Brown to tie the game at 17. So Ty transferred on Long Island in New York to Stony Brook. He's the first Seawolf, that's their nickname, to be active in the NFL. And he's got a touchdown for the first time in his career. And Brent Grimes, who's been to back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, has really struggled. He's given up a lot of deep passes this year. Eli Manning, I'm sure, saw that on film. He did an excellent job looking off the free safety, and Odell Beckham burned him. 
John, they've gone through so many tight ends, the Giants. You know, the Giants have always had a high standard for tight ends over the years. Bavaro era, they always had a great tight end coach, Coach Pope, for that position when he was with the Giants. But they've gone through Larry Donnell. Remember Daniel, uh, Daniel Fells coming up with the MRSA, and he's gone through 10 surgeries during this year and trying to get just save his life in terms of usefulness of his foot, let alone his football career. And tight end's been so important to Eli Manning over the years. And here's Will Ty, a guy who maybe was a practice squad guy at the start of the year. And he scores a touchdown against a former Giants tight end draftee, Dan Campbell's team. So the Ty touchdown evens the game at 17. Will Ty and Jerome Cunningham are the two tight ends that the Giants now have active on their roster this year. As Donnell was put on the injured reserve with a neck injury. Well, you've got three timeouts. Brian Tannehill. Plenty of time to get something. Line drive kick, try to minimize Landry's return. So Ajayi's got it. He pulled down to 22. It's been a good half for Cooper Tim. Oh, somebody's got to defend the deep third. And when you watch Odell Beckham run this little spot route, watch Grimes paying too much attention to Beckham and nobody's in that deep third to cover that corner route. So I'm sure Brent Grimes is frustrated. I don't know what that coverage was, but either Grimes or free safety number 31, Michael Thomas, blew it. That can't happen. We've seen the strength of the leg of the kicker, Franks, who attempted but missed a 63-yarder at New England earlier this year. They don't have to get all the way down the field for him. That pass broken up by Dominic Rogers Cromartie late on the out pattern to the rookie Devontae Parker. Well, if the Giants want to play playoff football, they've got to improve their two-minute defense. What better time to do it than right now? Dominic Rogers Cromartie at left corner, keying the quarterback the whole way, makes a beautiful break and drive. Giants got to get off the field. Their two-minute defense at the end of the half, at the end of the game, unacceptable. Time to turn up the rush. Ten, Tannehill throwing underneath. Jaya's got it to the 35-yard line. And we've seen the Jaya a couple of times now. He'll get the first down. Miami will use one of its three timeouts. And Jarvis Landry, not on the field, just went back towards the Miami locker room. That's what I was looking at as Offense. that play was wrapping up. And a flag was thrown. 85, both moving. Five-yard penalty, replay. Second down. Illegal shift with Cameron and Jennings moving at the same time. Let's go to Lisa Salters on the sideline. Yeah, Mike, uh, Jarvis Landry just took himself off the field. He came over to the sideline. Uh, I saw one player say, you okay? And he just kind of shook his head and went right back to the locker room. He had been checked out by the trainers a couple of times, but it was unclear what they were, uh, what they were evaluating. Remember, he has been on the injury report with a knee injury, but not sure, Mike, if that's what's bothering him. Okay, Lisa, he's off to a very good start of this one with those seven catches early on. Second and 15, Ajayi with the run. Down, the umpire takes the worst of that. 27-yard line. Miami got that timeout back after that penalty called against them the last play. The Giants are the team taking the timeout here with 18 seconds remaining. Well, Tom Coughlin wants to give his defense a chance to get a stop, perhaps block a kick, set up a return, and a long-range field goal. This is playoff time for the New York Giants. They're tied for first with a win tonight, and a lot of football left to be played. And when you have Tom Coughlin and Eli Manning and a go-to receiver like Odell Beckham, it's a tough matchup. I don't care what their record is. Get a look at the numbers. That big pass play to Beckham on the last drive and has brought the total yards pretty close to even here for this first half. Just like the score is. Guys have one timeout left. Tannehill steps up and gets hit. A yard short of the line of scrimmage. And with 11 seconds left, and the final timeout is taken here. By the Giants, Robert Ayers Jr. with the sack, but the pressure from Pierre Paul. Well, he's edging Fox, who's a backup right tackle. 
in the lineup for Jawan James, who's out. Airs with pressure inside. JPP coming off the edge. And the New York Giants, we've seen Colin Jenkins get a sack. Saw a little pass rush, and this Dolphin yeah. offensive line hasn't exactly been stellar. They've given up 34 sacks. They should get after the Dolphins. Tannehill, as he came off, was grabbing at his elbow, his right arm, forearm, and elbow area. So we'll watch that as we go to halftime. Meantime, Dwayne Harris will get a chance to return a punt. He brought one back last week against the Jets. 80 yards, and so the Giants use their timeouts. Trying to get it in the electrifying hands of Harris. Big kick, but he's got room from the 18. Coming left. Well, covered by the Dolphins. And the penalty flag is down with one second until half. The flag back by the spot where that 56-yard punt started from. During the kick. It'll go hands to the face, kicking team. It's a 10 yard penalty, first down. The 28 yard line, one second left. Giants get the ball to start the second half. That should move the ball up, Mike. And perhaps set the Giants up with at least a Hail Mary opportunity. How about Aaron Rodgers' Hail Mary? couple weeks ago. That's right. Uh, a week ago, Thursday in Detroit, the ball was thrown from the 35, 65 yards in the air to Richard Rodgers. The Lions were not in their prevent defense back at the goal line, thus no Calvin Johnson back there to knock it down, and Richard Rodgers was wide open. Now Tom Coughlin having conversation here about taking that Back as a re-kick potentially. They don't do that. So one second left, and what Miami could do here is bring their offense back out. Just kind of let the quarterback just take a snap and take a knee and not even risk a punt at this point. That's what I would do because you can get a free kick situation, you can get a block. I risk it. Just take the snap from center and get out of town. You should apply for one of these head coaching jobs, Mike. You, you know, you I'm very happy with you here. You'd be hard to work for, though. <laughs> I, I would not want to be one of your assistants. <laughs> He's screaming and yelling all the time. You know who's laughing right now? All the guys who work for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, so Tannehill's okay. We're going to have an exciting second half. Pretty interesting second quarter. Giants scored 14. Miami scored 10. Hold on. <laughs> Giants have their punt team out there. Here we go, Get everybody back in place as Tannehill takes a knee and the half comes to a close. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Miami Dolphins. And Don Shula here to be a part of it as well. I know that warms your heart, Chris Berm, to see the all-time winningest NFL coaches. We send it back to you in the studio for the Toyota halftime. Boomer. It does, Mike. Thank you very much, Don Shula. Great, great to be around all these years and good to see him. Great to be with you. And it might as well get an early start on the holidays. So happy holidays to everybody and imagine a Christmas tie. Uh, hard to believe that this is the Giants' first trip to Miami since 1996. Dan Reeves was coaching the Big Blue. That was his last year. Jimmy Johnson, his first Dolphins season. The year before, the guy you just saw, Don Shula's last. But memories of the Hall of Fame coaches' undefeated 72 Dolphins team are abounding tonight. You've seen it. The Dolphins honor their 50 years as a franchise with their all-time team of 50 players. 18 members of that 17-0 undefeated team are on it. They've yet to pop their annual cork when the last undefeated team loses each season. That's because the Carolina Panthers are now 13-0. Of course, they lead our final drive. 100 seconds to go, 100 yards. And the Falcons were in town, and right away, first series, Jonathan Stewart running. Panthers scored. Cam Newton throwing. Last series of the half to have Dixon, 28-0. Josh Norman, blanketing the leading receiver in football, Leo Jones. Five sacks, Kawan Short right here. Big hitting defense, Carolina. They've done it all year. That's Luke Keekley, Coach Ron Rivera. We want a shutout. You never get them in the NFL. So you know what? They stopped Atlanta at the one, and they got a shutout. They win 38-0, and Cam 
Come on, I can't hear you. We're 13 and 0. Bad news, big bad news for the Bengals. Pick an injury to Andy Dalton. Meanwhile, A.J. McCarron picked off William Gay. Steelers go into Cincy. They're still alive in the division. They win. Gronk is back. The Patriots are back. Tom Brady to Gronk. They never trailed Houston. Jabal Sheard. Patriots, six sacks. Rob Nikovich. They were relentless. Patriots, best record in the AFC. There it is. And Khalil Mack, a one-man wrecking crew to Brock Osweiler. That was a safety. Get out of my way. This is a sack. Get out of my way. He had five sacks on his own, and he did everything. When he was held, he even looked at the ref and said, give me that. I'll catch it. Five sacks. There it is. They upset the Broncos. But the Cleveland Browns, they led the day with nine sacks against San Francisco. Even Santa had a sack. Get ready for Christmas Eve and the Jaguars. The last 31 minutes outscored Indianapolis 48 to 3. That's right, they scored every which way, including a Bortles touchdown pass. Everybody in the pool. Playoff fever in Northern Florida. The Jags, yes, the Jaguars, they're one game back in the AFC South with three to go. Two teams in front of them, Indy, who they just threw into the pool, and Houston meeting Indy Sunday, which means at least one of them will lose. You can't get logic like this anywhere else. When we return, Morton Adam, they got better logic. Latest news from around the league. It's not dandy with Andy or Cincy. Back in 45 seconds. Presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Toyota Thon is back with a season full of holiday treats. Like 0% APR financing on the reliable Camry. Did you know 90% of Camry sold in the last 10 years are still on the road today? But hurry, our biggest event of the year won't last long. Right now at Toyota Thon, get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a 2016 Camry. Offer ends January 4th. For great deals on other Toyotas, visit Toyota.com. Make the holidays happier at Toyota Thon. Toyota, let's go places. You're watching the Toyota Halftime. Welcome back, everybody, to Halftime. Giants 17, Miami 17. Uh, Adam Schefter, Chris Mortensen, happy holidays to you happy guys. Happy holidays to you, you Boomer. Boomer. It's not happy holiday news, certainly for some of the real contending teams like the Cincinnati Bengals. We know Schefter, uh, Andy Dalton, we just saw him. Prognosis, will we see him again this year? Well, they actually got back good news today. He went to a hand specialist this morning, and he does not need surgery on the thummy fractured on this play yesterday. The Bengals are saying it's week to week. I think most people will be surprised if we see him again during the regular season, A.J. McCarron starts while Dalton is out. Meanwhile, for Indianapolis, Shefty, Matt Hasselbeck banged up Andrew Luck, so the focus on him, will we see him again? Well, the Colts owner Jim Mercy had said that he had suggested that he thought Andrew Luck could get back for Sunday's game against the Houston Texans. Doesn't look like that will be the case right now. He has not been cleared by the doctors to practice, not been cleared by the doctors to play. Uncertainty exists about when or if he'll be back this season, though Andrew Luck told reporters, Today, he will play again this season. Uh, we hope so, if it's medically smart. So, Peyton Manning, we now know Brock Osweiler Mort's not going to win every game for Denver, not necessarily okay. sacked a lot. Peyton Manning, will we see him again soon? Boomer, for the first time in four weeks, Broncos coach Gary Kubiak did not announce on a Monday that Brock Osweiler will be his starting quarterback. Kubiak says he wants to visit with Peyton Manning and see whether his foot is healed to the point where he can actually practice with the team for the first time in a month. The expectation? Osweiler will start this fifth game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dallas, mathematically alive. Tony Romo still on roster. Will we? <laughs> Boom. Jerry Jones sounded like a man who had conceded the season after Sunday's loss to Green Bay that dropped the Cowboys to 4-9. But that does not mean the team is ready to ice injured quarterback Tony Romo yet with an injured reserve designation. A front office source says until they are math math mathematically eliminated Boomer in the NFC East, the plan is to keep Romo on the active 53-man roster. They're two games behind Washington and Philadelphia and maybe the Giants tonight. In that division, nobody's eliminated. Well, you know what? <laughs> to quote the late pitcher Joaquin Andujar, you can sum it up in one word. You never know. <laughs> when we return, a little bit more at halftime in a tie game. Lamar Miller, two touchdown runs, Miami. Dolphins, 17, Giants, 17, back in 30 seconds.
Every new Toyota comes with the Toyota Care No Cost Maintenance Plan. What's Toyota Care? Engine oil changes. Tire rotation. Multi point inspection. Roadside assistance. And so much more. For two years or 25,000 miles. Whichever comes first. Right now at Toyota Thought, get 0% APR financing for 60 months on the versatile 2015 RAV4. Offer ends January 4th. For great deals on other Toyotas, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. A lot of teams roll out their all-time team. The Dolphins doing their 50th. Wow, if you grew up during this era, what a treat this was. Bob Greasy there. Larry Little, so many of the good offensive line we saw. Kuchenberg before Nick Anderson representing his era as well. The talented receivers like Warfield, Clayton, Duper all on hand. Nat Moore, who's so responsible for the relations with all these old players. More current like Zach Thomas and Jason Taylor got big hands. The fans here. Thomas and Jason Taylor got big hands. The fans here saw many of those guys play. The biggest ovations for Dan Marino. And the winningest coach of all time. Don Shula, they were so happy to see Coach Shula here. Look at this, great history of the Miami Dolphins, their 50th all-time team. Couple of current players like Cameron Wake and Brent Grimes made their 50th all-time team, but uh, kudos and a salute to the Dolphins for a first-class weekend from Friday until that ceremony here at halftime. To the game itself, 17-17, Mike Tirico, John Gruden. We'll hear from Lisa Salters in a little bit. Pretty entertaining half. Both quarterbacks played pretty well in that half, especially Eli Manning going 14 of 16. Tannehill, 23 passes, John, but 102 yards, so a lot of the short stuff. But as we go to tonight's first half, Zales' extraordinary moments, let's talk about what the Giants were able to do in moving the ball effectively with Eli. Well, Eli Manning saw that double A-gap blitz. He audible. You see the back swing wide to his left. It opens up Beckham for a critical first down. They ended up scoring a touchdown there. And then in a two-minute drill, right at the end of the half, it's a post pattern. To Odell Beckham, who runs right by Brent Grimes. How about that throw? They're going to put the season on Eli Manning's back. They're going to have to outscore the Dolphins down the stretch. And that's not overstating the season because they need to win to stay tied with Washington and Philadelphia. They're not a great tiebreaker tie spot. They have one more loss than those teams. So every half has pressure, but this half really has a lot of pressure for the Giants. Certainly does. You saw their pass rush come alive. They had some legitimacy to their running game, but they're going to need a lot more from Eli Manning in the final 30 minutes. Andrew Frank's kickoff is returnable for the first time here tonight. And Dwayne Harris will be stopped just shy of the 20-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline, check in with Lisa Salters. Mike, Tom Coughlin said there were things he liked and didn't like. He didn't like the fumble early that put Miami in point-blank range, but he said we did like that we killed him to a field goal. He said we've been running the ball better at times, but we're not tackling worth a darn. So he said all along we just got to keep fighting. As for the Dolphins, Dan Campbell came into this game saying Odell Beckham Jr. cannot have any big catches. That 45-yarder he said heard, and he said we've been doing everything, doubling him, rolling to him the one time we single him up, he said, and he hurts us. Mike. All right, Lisa, thank you. At the end of that kick return, Bobby McCain was there in the initial contact, did not get up, face down. So immediately the athletic training staff for Miami, along with their team doctors out there, Sir Ryan Grove leading the medical charge and all the players stopping for a moment. Man, are we happy to see that. Bobby McCain is down on the field for a minute set up and now he runs off and jogs off once you watch the right side there andre williams number 44 it's a peel back block while there's no flag thrown the league office may uh, be reaching out to mr williams there that is uh, not a play that fits the uh, specifications of what you're supposed to do blocking kicks meantime mccain goes out and john you're talking a uh, important player for this miami defense the last couple of weeks who leaves the field Certainly is. And Bryce McCain, no relation, will play corner at the top of the screen. Let's see what happens when the Dolphins go to their nickel package. Now, Odell Beckham Jr. just went back to the locker room right before this half started. It's the toss and a big hit 
on Jennings by Jelani Jenkins. So a big loss there. Lisa, what do you know about Odell Beckham Jr.? Yeah, Mike, I'm hearing that he went back into the locker room to get IV treatment because he's experiencing cramping in his legs, but I'm also being told that he will return. Lisa, we did mention for the folks who were not with us at the start of the game, the temperatures in the upper 70s and the humidity is very high as well tonight. You know, it's 75 degrees, and John, the humidity is 85%. And Jamar Fletcher at the top of the screen is a man I would go after if I were Eli Manning. Second and 14, there is Dwayne Harris with the catch and the quick hit to limit the game to just a couple of yards. Koa Misi made the tackle for Miami. Jamar Taylor is checking in to play right corner. They throw away from him. Another quick screen, and from inside out, Koa Misi who's played everywhere in his career as a Dolphin, defensive end, outside linebacker. Now he's playing inside and playing well, second on the team in tackles. So no Beckham, no starting quarter for Miami. It's third and 12. Dolphins rush four. Eli has a short pass to Will Ty. Touchdown earlier. Can't get the first down here as the combination of Jenkins and Jones force the Giants three and out. Important three and out stop for the Dolphins. and. Very disappointing for the Giants to come out of the locker room, have a negative yardage first down run, fall way behind in a down and distance and not have Odell Beckham. So Jarvis Landry goes back deep to receive. Brad Wing will punch it away for the Giants. Good hang time, deep kick for room after this 54 yard kick. Landry from a knee at the 19 accelerates Landry gets tackled in the open field by Dahl otherwise it could have gone a long way the Giants JT Thomas looks to be injured on that play in coverage for New York the Giants so weak at the linebackers spot with so many injuries see one of their starters Thomas and the Miami athletic training staff keeps him there until the Giants can come over to check on the fifth year man from West Virginia Watch the left side of your screen, number 55, Thomas. So it's a couple of special teams plays where we've seen people injured one per side. Let's go back to that other block, John. Jerry and Austin and I, Austin and I were talking about if it was a peel, peel back block. That was our initial thought. In fact, uh, that the fact that it was a blindside block with the shoulder is going to make that block that was thrown that injured McCain legal. So that Williams block was legal there. The Giants concern now the injury to Thomas. JT Thomas walked off with a little bit of a limp. Accompanied by the Giants athletic training staff. Tannehill and the Dolphins take over from their own 39-yard line. The flag comes down as Miller is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. That'll be holding. Holding. Offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty. Replay. First down. So Beckham not on the field for the Giants, getting an IV, Lisa was told. Jarvis Landry on that return in the first half took that hit, and this punt return to start the second half, he reached down to grab towards that knee that had been bothering him, punching that thigh area. He's got his helmet on on the sideline. But he's not on the field here for the moment. The penalty makes it first and 20. And Miller pulled down as he got to the hole. Jasper Brinkley gets the man who scored a couple of the touchdowns here tonight. These zone reads have come into the NFL from the high school college ranks. You see the tight end easy release to block the safety. They don't even block the defensive end. They're going to read him. That's what I want to be, a tight end that doesn't have to block. Is that, is that what you're coming back as? <laughs> Your next football life? Yes. <laughs> From their own 37, Tannehill to Miller. There was no blocking at the line of scrimmage to open it a hole. And no gain as Pierre Paul and Ayers make the tackle. Well, let's see if the Giants can pick up their tackling in the second half. You saw J.T. Thomas miss on a Lamar Miller score 18 yards after missed tackles and Lamar Miller basically made the whole giant defense miss 
on a 38-yard romp. Giants got to wrap up. They got to get hats to the football. Got to tackle better. Yeah, got to get Pierre Paul back out there. You saw he was down for a second after that play. He comes off in discomfort. Third and 11. Whole bunch of subs out there for the moment for the Giants. Tannehill throws, complete for the first down. Landry back on the field and has it at midfield. That's a great throw by Tannehill. Landry's and still shaking up. Sorry, but didn't mean to interrupt. Anticipation. Watch Tannehill find Landry on this outside breaking route. He's going to let this ball go with great anticipation and location. Watch him here on the sideline at the end of the play. Tell even from up here, he was in a little bit of discomfort as he started to reach back down towards that knee and thigh area, and he stayed on the sideline. From midfield, first down, Tannehill, launcher, deep downfield, no separation, no interception. Rogers Cromartie has hands on it, couldn't secure the pass intended for Kenny Stills. Kenny Stills, who was acquired from the Saints in a trade. Brought to Miami to give the Finns a deep ball receiver. He's been awful quiet this year. And Dominic Rogers Cromartie has a chance for another interception. I can see him catch that. He's dropped a couple balls he normally catches. Pierre Paul back in for the Giants. Second and ten. Miller time. Left. On that run, Casillas escorted him to the sideline. One back run, and Lamar Miller bounces it to the outside. You're going to see Prince of Mucamara unblocked. Got to make these tackles. New York Giants are going to have to find some fuel from someplace. They have a lot of beat up players. Hot night. Pierre Paul back on the field. They're going to have to find some second effort here to keep their season alive. Third and two movement, left guard, Dallas Thomas. Ball start, offense, number 63, five-yard penalty, third down. Well, that'll make any coach very unhappy. Third down, a long one, and you have a false start. Inexcusable in a 17-17 game. Guard play Thomas and Turner, something you were watching closely prep for this game. Has not been a strength of the Dolphins this year. Either guard, Turner or Thomas, has played well enough for the Dolphins. Their third round pick back to back years. Thomas in 13, 77 Billy Turner, their third round pick last year. Audible from Tannehill. The blitz is picked up. Tannehill downfield to Stills. Stills is in for the touchdown. That's why he's here, Mike. Call Sean Payton, make a trade, and get somebody that can make a play deep. But I love what Tannehill did. He audibled again. They have two plays called in the huddle. And if he sees the blitz, he's going to kill it to the pass. It's great recognition. He communicates to everyone. The blitz protection is outstanding. And Kenny Stills rips him. See if he got in, Mike. Watch him right around the pylon there. We'll watch his feet first. Get that ball inside the pylon is the key there. And from pylon, Cam, you see it's just coming inside there. And that foot then. Knocks the pylon, yet to be confirmed by the replay booth. And now two thumbs up from the side, so it is confirmed touchdown for Stills for the third time this year. Andrew Frank's extra point puts Miami back on top. Watch a quarterback develop, do those things, would give you the keys to the car, put it in the right spot. You got the right play called, Stills in the end zone. Dolphins lead by seven. Player safety big concern in football, top priority for so many of us. 
We're around the game, ESPN USA Football Clinic at the Dolphins training facility in Davie, Florida, and ESPN donated more than $400,000 to advance the safety of playing football, teaming up with USA Football to promote a better, safer game. Yesterday, on behalf of ESPN, Kenneth Garay, Sebastian Martinez Christensen, the voices of NFL on Deportes Radio, presented a donation $250,000 to USA Football. Donna Ponte of the Dolphins on hand to receive a 144-page football coaching resource guide been published by USA Football, presented by ESPN to nearly 15,000 schools. Try to get everybody on the right page. Touchback, back to the touchdown. Take a look at this, Mike. They got a running play called, and they're killing it with a max protection bomb play. So he keeps the tight end in. He keeps the back in. He sees the blitz coming, and... He throws the deep corner out to Kenny Stills for a touchdown. Well recognized, well thrown. And the reaction by Tannehill is what I like. He did his preparation. He's been given the freedom to change plays and change games. And that's just what he did. Giants back out of the field. You see up in the white at the 30-yard line. It's Beckham running back from the locker room after getting his IV. Here is Maddie. Eli Lyman dunked that look out. Big hit, but staying on his feet is Orleans Darqua. Our first call for the first year back out of Tulane. We got out of the Kelvin Shepard tackle to gain six. And here's Beckham. They need Beckham. Beckham has an illness, came into this game not feeling great. Perhaps that had something to do with his disappearance to start this hey, half. Got to keep him in this game. Four targets in the first half. Beckham caught three balls, including the 45-yarder. Darkwa remains in the back. He'll get his first carry of the night. Orleans Darkwa puts the shoulder down, gets the 36, 10 first down yards for the Giants. Orleans Darkwa. Reverse pivot by Eli and shows good vision in the hole. You got to really study these New York Giants to see who's coming and going in the backfield. I've seen Vereen, Jennings, we've seen Williams, and now it's Darkwa to start the third quarter. The Dolphins know him. He played four games here last year. Only carried four times. Playing tonight. His 13th game this season for the Giants. That time with nowhere to go. And uh, no gain on that first down. Here's Lisa Salters on the sideline. Yeah, Mike, uh, Bobby McCain headed back to the locker room now. Uh, we still have not gotten any official word about what they're evaluating him for, but he looked, he appeared to me to be very emotional uh, as they walked him off the field. Right. He went up the tunnel earlier when the injury initially happened, came back out, but now being taken back up there without his helmet. So second and ten now for Elon. Darkwood series here. That's Jones with wow. the face mask up top. That will cost him. Rashad Jones had the hit too high. He filled the alley like one of the old time safeties. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 20. It's a 15 yard penalty out of the end of the run. Automatic. First down. If you don't get the actual mask part there, that opening of the helmet, you get your hand in any part of that opening, it constitutes the same thing as a grab and twist, like a face mask flag. So that's 15. Darkwood checked by the Giants staff. Meantime, Jelani Jenkins, Miami starting linebacker, is being looked at by the Dolphins athletic training team. So after a first half of very few injuries, very few flags, no replay reviews, a lot of fits and starts and a lot of big hits have taken some players out of the game here in this second half. Jenkins is 53, middle of your screen. Took the hit from Ruben Randall coming down the block. Physical football game, Mike. The Dolphins doing an excellent job disguising coverages. Are they going to stay in a split safety coverage? Are they going to roll rotate to a single safety? Eli's got to look for number 22, Jamar Taylor at the top of the screen. Backup corner who's really struggled. Flag brings them to the Miami side of midfield. Rashad Jennings is in for the Giants at running back. 
Beckham top of the screen. Eli surveys hit as he throws, completes to Jennings to the 30-yard line. First down gain of 19. Manning just got rid of that time. First down, Giants. Well, Eli gets a chance to go through his entire progression. There's just not a good enough pass rush. Eli surveys the field, and Jennings is a good pass receiving back for the first down. And Dominican Sue, the highest paid defensive player in football, needs to make his presence felt here quick. Safety blitz picked up. Manning pass is caught. Ruben Randall out of bounds for the first down. John, it was one of the things when Ben McAdoo came in with his Packers offense, he was the quarterback coach there, increase Eli's completion percentage. Well, it's near a season, a career best for him, 62%. He's had a 63% year. Look at him tonight, 19 yeah. of 21. He's audibling on almost every play. Watch him study the Dolphin defense. Giants in the red zone, the Miami 18. Manning pass caught. Harris pulled down. They'll give him seven yards. Just have to wonder how long Ndamukin Sue can go. Number 93. You always thought playing in Florida was very different for players and their stamina. They had no huddle offense. They wanted to wear Sue out. They've done a good job of that. They just don't have enough healthy bodies inside to give him a blow. And it is tough playing in his heat, especially when you don't hey, expect it right before Christmas. Second and three. Saws Jennings trying to patiently wait for a block. Able to get the first down. Nice job. He waited for Eric Flowers at left tackle with the injured left ankle to hang in there, get a body on a body, and get the Giants a first and goal. And so Sue's either worn out or he's not playing hard enough. He's got to pursue the football and make this tackle short of the first down. He's just watching the game right now. He's exhausted, and Eli Manning in this up-tempo offense is carving him up. Timeout. Oh. It's called for. Flag comes down as well. Let's see what happens first here. First charge timeout, Miami. This is a 30 second timeout. John, you talk about the heat and the players. Dominic Sue played 85% of the snaps the last three years in Detroit. He's played 85% of the snaps here, second most on this team. You would think the Dolphins are better conditioned because they're down here in the heat all the time. They're very interesting. They don't always practice outside because uh, they don't want to wear their team down during the week to get to the game and be dead tired with the tank empty. No, this is tough on 300-pound defensive tackles that are playing 85% of the snaps, but this is not an air-conditioned dome you're playing in. It's humid. People are leaning on you. They're double-teaming you. They're making your life miserable, and I haven't seen Sue come off the field tonight. First and goal, quick count, Giants. Eli rolling it, throwing it in zone. Incomplete. They say Mr. Magic didn't keep his feet in before his body came down. How does he catch these footballs? There's a discussion here between the two officials on the side as we watch it. They're still in conversation. Secured there, he's dragging that toe. I'll tell you, <laughs> I'm close. challenging that. They're still discussing it on the field here, John. You gotta watch to make sure he kept the ball all the way through the process of the catch. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Ruled incomplete. There's pylon cam. It's right there. You can see him scrape that across the top of the grass. And, John, and Tom Coughlin has thrown, John, the challenge flag. I'm going with Beckham. The, the How about one, that body control and sideline awareness? What a play. The one thing that's gonna the be Giants interesting to watch. The ruling on the field of an incompletion. In this review is how much the ground comes into play after the catch as Beckham goes to the ground and the ball hits. Does he keep control? It's very close. This part was another spectacular Beckham moment.
Jerry Austin, we looked at replay. What do you think? I think this is a touchdown. He has control of the ball. He gets his toe in, drags the second foot, lands out of bounds, never gives up control of the ball, meets the requirements. After review, the, catch. the ruling on the field has changed. The receiver had possession, got two feet down in bounds. It is a touchdown. New York will not be charged with a timeout. Add another one to the incredible Odell Beckham Jr. clip reel. The feet came down. We should yet. Watch the drag of the ball all the way across the ground there. And it is ruled in consultation with the replay central in New York that Beckham has scored and the Giants are an extra point away from a tie game. He does amazing things. Extra point for Josh Brown is good. And we're tied at 24. Before we talk about Beckham, I want to talk about that touchdown for a second. When we're going to talk about catch or no catch, when does the ground help you or hurt you? He caught the ball. He stays in control. He drags it all the way across the ground. And by the rule, it's a touchdown. When they start talking about that with this little committee that was formed this week, I wonder if they're going to address that. Just watch this here. It doesn't take away from his spectacular hand strength, his control, his incredible ability to get his feet down. But watch this ball. It just drags across the ground here. I know he keeps control of it. If you're supposed to go to the ground to maintain it, he's maintained control, but the ground is helping him there to, make, to keep the ball in his grasp. In any case, John, tie game, and the spectacular Beckham with another one for the highlight reel. The guy is sick. He goes into the locker room to get an IV. He comes out and makes a play like that. Talk about completing the process. That's one of the greatest processes I've ever seen. <laughs> Give the man a sticker for his helmet. Odell Beckham Jr. You can't cover them. They're doing everything they can to double them. You heard the head coach say we're going to roll coverage to them. Eli made a great throw. That's what was lost in all those replays. But Odell Beckham Jr., the primary receiver, offensive coordinator Ben McAdoo doing an excellent job moving him around. He's playing on the left side, the right side. They put him in motion. He's in the slot. He's out of the backfield. And Eli Manning knows they got to continue to feed him. Incredible last three drives for Eli. 11 for 11 and the three touchdowns. So Odell Beckham Jr. in his 25th career game. Odell 25. Not Odell 25, but Odell 25 games. First in NFL history in catches. First in NFL history receiving yards. And now that touchdown gets him to 23. Tied for second most touchdowns. First 25 games. That's more than hello from Odell in his first 25. Back to Tannehill and the Dolphins, even at 24. Five to go in the third. Miller's wrapped up. Kuhn brings him down. No game. The second time I've seen Cooper Taylor, a young safety man, around the football. Taylor getting extensive playing time in this heat. Doing a nice job in the middle of the giant defense. But Mike, this is where I want to see Ryan Tannehill. 24-24 game. He's 28 and 32 as a starting quarterback. These are the kind of games Dolphin fans want to see their young quarterback take over and win. Second and nine, Tannehill. Complete to Jordan Cameron. She shot the first down. The ball comes out. Fumble ruled on the field. to be Miami ball in third and two. Greg Rolstead comes out and says third down very decisively. Hertzlick's over there. Mark Hertzlick in coverage, trying to pry it out. It was out, it was down, and a nice job by Cameron to pin it against his body. Good challenge. Tom Coughlin, he's feeling it on those challenges he says i'm one for one i'm gonna try this again i like this these coaches i used to stand down there with that red flag everybody's yelling at you challenge it challenge it that the runner was down by contact so let's see what happens yeah giants had the overturn on the last one if they don't win this they would be out of challenges
college football playoff semifinals will happen. Our coverage from Spider Camps brought to you by DirecTV. And Craig Rolstead's had a look at the Giants' challenge. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Although there was a fumble, the ball was recovered by the Miami player when he pinned the ball against his possession. New York will be charged for the first time out. And they cannot challenge anymore the rest of the game because they didn't have a second correct one. There you see the ball out from Cameron, but watch as he secures it against his body. And Thomas, who's back in the game after being hurt, is making contact with him. So the Giants, even though that was right in front of them, challenged, and now they'll have to count on the calls the rest of the way to the two-minute warning. Third and two, and don't forget Tannehill and the read option in these short yardage situations. Tannehill throws a Hurtslick coming in on him. That almost went the other way. This time they bring the linebacker pressure, and Mark Hurtslick was in the face of the quarterback. Boy, Miami's lucky there. Watch Jennings try to pick off the cover man at the bottom of the screen, and number 43, Craig Dahl, has a chance for an interception. Looks like he didn't even see the ball. He was going for the hit there, wrapping up. Wayne Harris back to receive. Matt Dar kicks. Turned it over. Rocket shot. 62 yards. Harris backpedals to the 10. Took him five yards to reverse field. He's brought down the 19-yard line. Big kick from the rookie out of Tennessee. Matt Dar. 67. Beg your pardon on that one. For Dar. Well, we mentioned at the start of the season we we're dedicating our year to Frank Gifford, Mr. Monday Night Football, the great giant in his days, the Hall of Famer who was in the booth more than anyone else over his 27 years on Monday Night Football. And the Giants playing tonight, we were all thinking about uh, the season and remembering Frank. Our honor to wear those number 16 pins in his memory. We're on our production trucks to travel around the country. And Tom Coughlin has worn that 16 pin as well to keep alive the memory of one of the great people in the National Football League and in television and Monday Night Football. Frank Gifford. 19. Get it. Nowhere to go. Stopped by Olivier Vernon. A loss of a yard on that one. And all these instant replay challenges and processes and things like that have given the Dolphin defensive line a chance to rest. And Olivier Vernon makes a huge play to put the Giants behind in the down and distance. But I had these linebackers up in those A-gaps. They've been there all night. Jelani Jenkins, 53, hurt earlier, back in. Only one brings pressure. Flag down as Manning throws sideline towards Beckham. It's incomplete. Grimes was in coverage, but pass interference is the call. Let's see which way. I assume it's on pass Grimes. Defense, number 21. The ball would place at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. Well, Eli read the blitz, he audibled, and they get the veteran Grimes again. Number 21. Beyond five yards. And First down, Giants. Eighth penalty on Miami. The Giants had two early, but none since. Miami rushes three, Eli steps up, slings it, incomplete as oh. Nix is breaking free, Manning gets hit late, and a flag comes down, and Pugh is right in the face of Jordan Phillips. He should be ejected, Jordan Phillips should be ejected for that. Rookie out of Oklahoma, First way late. Foul. Roughing the passer, defense, number 97, It's a 15-yard penalty. An automatic first down. That's what you're talking about, John. Take a look at 97. He's going to enter your screen here.
I don't like those penalties. Second time the Dolphin front has hit Eli late. Keep an eye on Beckham. He has gone deep twice tonight against Grimes. 47-yard line inside. Handoff Jennings. We've seen some of the nice patience by Jennings tonight, waiting for a crease or a cutback lane to develop. They'll gain just about five yards on that one. Well, this tempo is taking its toll on the Dolphins. And Dominican Sue at nose tackle. They're going to double team them with this power play. They're not shying away from Sue now. They know they have them on the ropes physically. Fatigue has set in. Time of possession, pretty even. Number of plays run, pretty even. Here in the third it is Ruben Randall. Got a block from Beckham. First down inside the Miami 40. They'll bring it to the 37-yard line on the gain of 11. Eli's got a quick trigger. You're in a shotgun. you got to be able to catch and release. Oftentimes, Manning doesn't even get the laces. This ball comes out like Derek Jeter, the ex-New York Yankee, Mike. Well done. 37, Eli contacted as he threw. Completes another one. Jennings in the middle of the field. Just a short gain of two. Olivier Vernon tried to get to the quarterback. If you put a clock on Eli Manning, that ball is coming out in 1.8 seconds or quicker. This Dolphin rush just can't get there. They've got to bat a pass down. Got to get their hands up and try to reject one of these quick throws. That one incompletion was the penalty. Hand signal to Beckham here. There'll be a run on the other side to Jennings. We get close to the 30-yard line. Manning is 9 for 9, John, here in this third quarter. And the Dominican Sioux checks back into the game. You just sense the fatigue across the board in this Dolphin defense. Not a lot of life. Here they come up the middle with those two linebackers again. Let's see what Eli has for him this time. Get out of his hands quick. That pass incomplete for Beckham, who had it on his hands, and then Grimes got physical with him. And it's the first incompletion thrown by Manning in the half. And we'll see if the Giants go for a long field goal. Nice play by Grimes. It's what the great corners have. They have a short-term memory. You get beat deep. Give up a couple plays. You got to keep playing against these great receivers. And that's nice work from Brent Grimes when they really needed it. See how good Brown has been this year from 49. Drifting right. No good. Just the second miss this year for Brown again. We mentioned earlier there's a new snapper, Zach Diazzi, who's been here for nine years. Danny Aiken, the snapper. Everything in that part of the operation looked pretty good. This one just pushed to the right. And we remain tied at 24. <laughs> 39-year-old Dan Campbell. Who's, uh, Former tight end, full of energy and passion. You see the special teams group discussing what happened there. Flag down as Tannehill was taken off. Ball start, offense, number 63, five-yard penalty, first down. Second time, Dallas Thomas. Terrible penalties, simple penalties, false starts, pre-snap penalties. No excuse for him, especially on the first play of a series. Jarvis Landry has checked back into the game. So has Lamar Miller. Don't forget about Lamar Miller if you're Miami. 11 rushes, 87 yards. He's been hard to tackle tonight. <laughs> Giants' Marcus Kuhn went off to the locker room. He's had a good impact on that defensive front. Right out to Landry, made one man miss. Landon Collins wasn't having any more of that. Rogers Cromarty couldn't get the shifty Landry. It's hard to be critical of this missed tackle, but Jarvis Landry, he catches more passes at or behind the line of scrimmage than any receiver I've ever seen ever. And, man, is he good after the catch. He turned into many punt returns with that guy. He's yes, go. he does. Go get him on the edge. 
Miami trying to keep its slim hopes alive. The Giants trying to tie for the divisional lead, all even at 24 as we go to the fourth. ESPN, celebrating the legacy of Monday Night Football. Giants trying to tie. Somebody's going to win this division. Six and seven, the best right now. Hey, there's 21 teams in pro football that have a losing record, so it's not just the NFC East that's not up to snuff right now. Fourth quarter begins. Second and 11. Tannehill underneath. Landry, the catch. He's just a couple yards shy of the first down. It will be third down. I love Landry. He plays everywhere. Mike, watch this. He's the kickoff return man. He's their punt return man. Here he is playing in the backfield as a running back. Now he's the flanker in a close formation. Here he is playing split in. Now he's the number three man in the slot. And on third down, he does a great job. Hard guy to find, hard guy to defend, Jarvis Landry. Right here on third and two, they go the other way and pick up the first down. A nice move by Damian Williams, who will be just on the giant side of midfield, Wanyunga. Making the tackle here, so it'll be a first down at the 49-yard line. Fancy little man-to-man -man beater, Jordan Cameron, lined up as a wide receiver. Comes down and rubs off the linebacker who's covering Williams. Nice design. I'm impressed with Zach Taylor, this young offensive coordinator. He's only calling his second game. He's given Tannehill some opportunities to audible. He's put him in some check-with-me situations, and... Been pretty impressive. They had some balance running and passing. Landry comes back to the sideline one more time after that play. Tannehill on the boot. Fires complete. Spinning move by Greg Jennings. He's brought down at the 34-yard line. You mentioned, John, uh, Zach Taylor. So his father-in-law is Mike Sherman, who was the offensive coordinator here with Joe Philbin. Mike's daughter, Sarah, is... Married to Zach. Zach came in, my favorite moment of this week. What did he hand you? He handed me my old Buccaneer quarterback book. He was one of my rookie <laughs> quarterbacks in minicamp. He kept my book. At least he took notes. Uh, great 10 years later. He's been traipsing that all over the country. Proud, Proud of his kid. Yeah. Proud of him. You know, you don't just talk about Dan Campbell. Talk about Zach Miller, Lou Anarumo, the defensive coordinator. I wouldn't let these young coaches out of here. Second and five. Here's Landry back in here. Paul waiting. Couldn't wrap him up. No gain. Terry Wynn comes over to finally bring down Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, that time they hand him the ball out of reverse, and JPP slow plays it, just can't quite wrap up. Still fighting through that club that he's wearing on his right hand. Don't know how long he's going to wear that. Don't know if he'll ever take that off, but it certainly inhibits his play. It's third and five, three receivers to the top. The Giants are rushing four. They flush Tannehill, who points, directs, fires downfield. It's incomplete. Devontae Parker couldn't win the 50-50 ball with Dominic Rogers cromarty And Miami will punt it away. DRC has played well tonight. And Parker, the rookie out of Louisville, has been invisible. See your quarterback scrambling, uncovered. Not good enough by Parker. You're never going to beat a veteran corner with that route running. So Tennessee rookie Matt Dar trying to balance that inside the 20 and touchback number. Got the bounce. It'll be inside the five. Walt Aikens down there to take care of the good work from the rookie Dar, leaving Eli 96 yards to go. Chris McGrain, South Beach style. A lot of Giant fans in the house tonight. Giants' first down run is a run by Jennings for the first down. So from their own four, they gain 12 to the 16. That's how you come off your own goal line. Hand the ball to a 230-yard uh, pound back. Let him run to daylight. He did a beautiful job cutting it back and at real spe speed. How about Shamil Gary, number 27, making a one-on-one -on -one tackle? Gary in with a lot of 
players rotating through both defenses at this point. Manning, oh deep shot, back up, wide open! Odell, so long, Giants lead! From coverage, <laughs> Odell Beckham destroys him. And with Ray Lewis in the house, he gave it the Ray Lewis dance in the end zone. 84 yards. Injured Giant back there, the left tackle, Eric Flowers, who was banged up coming in with a left ankle injury, holding that ankle as the Giants lead by six. Bottom of the screen, you're just going to see a slant route. I have no idea what Rashad Jones, we talked about the corner number 22, Jamar Taylor, a backup who checked into the game because of the injury. Jones and Taylor blow coverage. And if you blow coverage against Odell Beckham, Eli won't miss that one. An 84-yard touchdown for Eli Manning's fourth touchdown pass of the night. Beckham had the 87-yarder earlier this season against the Pats. So add the 84 to that at a 72-yarder last week against the, against the Jets. And now has given the Giants the six-point lead. Flowers limps off with the help of the Giants athletic training staff. As the two guys from Isidore Newman High School in New Orleans celebrate a 12th touchdown catch of the year. Extra point good from Brown. Penalty marker down with pushing and shoving amongst the interior linemen after the extra point. Craig Rolstead, the referee, came to say it was good. And one of the rest of his crew let him know we got something else going on behind the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, kicking team, number 73, that penalty would be enforced on the kickoff. Timeout. Marshall Newhouse with the flag. The Giants go two plays in 96 yards. Their homer hitter touched the ball again. And the Giants lead by seven. Well, these two roommates at LSU came out of the same draft class, the same position from the same school. I've been so looking forward to being opponents for the first time. And these two young men who met at a seven-on-seven -seven passing camp back in 10th grade and immediately knew they connected and they would be friends. Boy, they put up a show tonight. 15 catches between them. Beckham has scored touchdowns for the Giants to tie the game at 24 and that 84-yarder giving New York a seven-point lead. The Newhouse penalty is going to give Landry a chance to return this kickoff, but he doesn't get it. Instead, it is Damian Williams on the return. Williams goes through the tackle of Williams, but then is cleaned up by Cooper Taylor. Well, in this coverage, Odell Beckham, he just runs a slant and go. And you see the safety, Rashad Jones, he jumps the slant. And number 22, the right corner, Jamar Taylor, has got to protect his safety. Didn't do it, blew the coverage, and Odell Beckham is off to the races. But Bobby McCain, the starting corner, got hurt earlier. Backup corner, Taylor into the game. You got to continue to go after him. Bobby McCain got hurt on that kickoff to start the third quarter. It did not come back. But the Giants have some injuries up front with the D-line as Miller slams it in there for a couple of yards. Marcus Kuhn has a knee injury. He's now been determined out. We told you he went to the locker room earlier. George Selby, during that last drive, was walked up the tunnel, and he is being evaluated for a concussion. So the Giants... Up front, remember, Demontre Moore was cut by the team, signed with Miami. That doesn't become official till tomorrow. So he's not here. Coons out. Selby's out. Second and eight, Tannehill. Rolling in the pressure, just getting rid of it. Bench man, look out. Took out Tom Coughlin on that play. Yes. The coach went down along with the other Giants, Dominic Rogers Cromarty. TC gets back up. Coach ready to go. Blitz off the edge and Jason Pierre Paul to the inside. 
Tom Coughlin going down on the sideline. Let's hope he's all right. Third down and eight. Giants struggling to get their rushers in here. Nikita Whitlock, number 49, their fullback, has checked in to rush the passer. Watch out for the spin move, Mike. Play clock running down. In time, Tannehill gets it off. He's got time. Nobody's open, though. Now he's scrambled. Throws, and it's caught by Landry at the 45-yard line. First down and a pickup of 25. What a great job by Tannehill on third and eight in the pocket. Resets, keeps his eyes downfield, and that's how you react to a quarterback that's scrambling. Watch Landry. He sees his quarterback in trouble. He breaks off his pattern and comes back for a critical first down. The show with the two receivers continues. Big play is needed here in the fourth. Read option keep. Tannehill turn the corner. Hit hard out of bounds. Gain of seven. Landon Collins made that hit. It's a quarterback who has taken a ton of big shots in his first four years. He's going to take shots when you run these zone reads. It's going to be a keep. They're going to read the end man on the line of scrimmage. And if he slants, you keep the football. And Tannehill takes off to the outside, and you're going to take some hits when you run the football. But let's see if the Giants can protect a lead. They've been unable to finish games with leads in the fourth quarter. Damian Williams, the back now, has the screen. Pouncy out there to block. Williams, good job spinning to the 31-yard line. Eight-yard first down game. Nice work by Williams, who is a pass-receiving specialist out of the backfield. Trevin Wade, number 31, right side of your screen, has a chance to make this tackle. Can't get it done, and Williams gets a first down. Expect Steve Spagnolo to blitz. He is a well-known crunch time blitzer at the end of the game. He's got to to help his guys. Got Montori Hughes and Jay Bromley, the end of the defensive line rotation out there. Because of the other injuries. The guy stopped for no game. Pierre Paul, who is working hard here tonight. He again. certainly is, Mike. He came from the backside there. It showed his old form. He got off the ball quickly, beat Deion Sims across his face. That's a nice play. You're a tight end. You have to deal with this man as a run defender. And his get off is what makes him special. Second and ten, Tannehill has time. Looking for a second reaction play with Landry. Jarvis Landry couldn't get it covered by Trevin Wade. That's a strange blitz that time by the Giants. They have people dropping out of there. It's half man, half zone. It's Jarvis Landry on a scramble drill, and that's how you plaster to your man when the quarterback scrambles. Trevin Wade doing a nice job as the nickel corner. The New York Giants. Drafted in the seventh round by Cleveland. Cut by New Orleans on the Lions practice squad. A guy who has opened the eyes of Steve Spagnolo as the season has gone on. This is third and ten. In field goal range, but down seven. Tannehill. Dropped by Williams. Damian Williams couldn't hang on. We have a flag down back by the quarterback. It's going to be a hole. Let's see what Coughlin does here. Because it would take the ball back to the 41, take them out of field goal range in all likelihood. Let's see what they decide. They're going to push them back. Holding. Offense. Number 74. That's a 10 yard penalty. Replay. Third down. That's Fox at right tackle filling in for Juwan James. It was a stunt. Whitlock 49. Coming up inside, you see Fox 74 on the holding call, and it's third and 20 if you're Miami. Try to get some kind of completion. At least give yourself a chance at a field goal. Love Nikita Whitlock out of Wake Forest. who's a defensive end, made the team as a fullback. It's his 40th snap of defense he's played. He's played 100 at fullback, two-way playing. Giants digging deep here 
After the Dolphins' 11th penalty of the night, Tannehill in the middle for Cameron. Has it broken up by Dahl. What a great play by Dahl. Dahl, the ex-St. Louis Ram, who knows Steve Spagnolo's defense, filling in for Brandon. Merriweather timed it perfectly. Great play by Dahl. And what a decision by Tom Coughlin there, John. It's a seven-point game, so a field goal only would have made it four, but changes the dynamics of the game when Miami gets the ball back later on. And this decision to push him back means there's no field goal attempt. It's a punt by Matt Darr, whose last one pinned the Giants inside their own five-yard line. Harris going to let this one go. The bounce is nearly identical. And it'll be stopped at the three. Giants went 96 yards in two plays last drive. What will they do from 97 yards? Tom Coughlin's the oldest coach in professional sports in North America. He's 69 years old. Easy to take shots that this is the guy who wears the face of those late Giants losses this year. I always ask this question. Who do you have? After Beckham and Eli, name the next best Giants. The personnel has not been there. Tom Coughlin has a team of a lot of guys off the side of the road contending here for the lead in the NFC East with three weeks left after tonight. Yeah, this isn't the most talented giant team he's had, and Tom Coughlin's not worrying about getting fired. Don Shula got fired. Tom Landry got fired. Chuck Knoll got fired. You can't worry about getting fired. He's going to go in the ring of honor for the New York Giants, possibly a Hall of Fame coach. You don't want Tom Coughlin to coach your football team. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, Mike? I don't know. This guy's one of the all-time greats and great people. you got to credit his Giants. A lot of backup players in this heat have played as hard as they can. And that weather's starting to take a toll both ways. Jelani Jenkins was slow to get up on that play for Miami. And the officials have been very conscious of that over the last couple of weeks, making sure they're another set of eyes trying to help the training staff. So... Jenkins comes off. You hear from the Giant fans. This is the Giants' first visit to Miami in 19 years. The NFL has this now quadrennial schedule where you play a team from the other conference every four years. So you visit at a minimum of eight years, except the Giants' visit here back in 07 was a game moved to London. So Giant fans haven't seen their team down here since 96. Second and eight, Jennings. Gain a couple of yards and John I laugh at 49 Whitlock who was out there on the last series as a third down pass rusher now he's out there as a fullback trying to lead the way for for the running back Jennings I think Tom Coughlin would love to see his offense finish this game put Miami away Eli Manning has more incompletion or has more touchdowns and incompletions in this game he's been tremendous he needs to find another completion to keep this drive alive Beckham, who burned Jamar Taylor before, matched up with him, bottom of the screen. There is safety help off your screen. Third and five, Eli in trouble, hit as he threw incomplete. Vernon was coming to get the quarterback. Manning got rid of it in time, and Miami needed a three and out, and they get it just under six minutes left in regulation. Well, when Miami needs a pass rush, it's been Olivier Vernon. That time, he beats rookie Eric Flowers with ease those are two ex Miami Hurricanes and that's a critical stop for the Dolphins and somehow Jar Jarvis Landry <laughs> continues to go Mike he is struggling physically with all the work that he's had tonight wing kicking out of his own end zone Landry's back in his own 35 perhaps to get a run up to get a running start at this ball wing gets rid of it Landry on the run can't get to it on the bounce and let it go and it stops shy of midfield so the Dolphins take over in Giants territory 550 left their defense needed a three and out and the hit by Olivier Vernon on Manning helped force that Giant fans have seen their team here all too often leads against Dallas and Atlanta against New Orleans, against New England, against the Jets, the inability to close it out. Now can Tom Coughlin's defense come up with the plays? Eli's done enough in the air, four touchdown passes. Can the D stop Miami? Great field position for Ryan Tannehill. 
First down throw is off the hands of Landry. Incomplete and a flag on Landry for throwing Trevin Wade after the play. It's just frustration. Wade, who has covered Landry on back-to-back -back snaps. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 14. That's a 15-yard penalty. The down counts. Second down. That's one of the worst penalties you'll see. Miami's had a few of those, John, in the second half. They have now 12 penalties for over 100 yards here on the night. Dan Campbell took him out of the game. It's going to have to be one of these young receivers that has to step up. Landry, who already has an unsportsmanlike and a taunting, his third 15-yard flag this season. Tannehill trying to make up for it over the middle. It's hung on to by Devontae Parker at midfield. Gets a lot of the penalty yardage back, but it will be third down and 11 because the down did count on the Landry flag. There's Parker, the rookie out of Louisville. Haven't called his name much. He's been held in check by Dominic Rogers, Cromartie, and Landry back in the game in this short yardage situation. Oh, it is third and 11. I'm sorry, Mike. After that flag, so we'll see Landry can atone. He's got Trevin Wade again covering him in the slot. Giants bring pressure. Tannehill steps up, throws on the run for Landry, incomplete. He's targeted him a lot tonight, a ton of targets for Landry. Tannehill disgusted with himself. He bought time in the pocket. Landry was breaking free late. And Tannehill just missed it. 41 throws by Tannehill. That's the 18th time that he targeted Landry. He couldn't pull that one in. So inside of five minutes, right around midfield, Dar will try to pin the Giants inside the five for the third time in this half. Harris, feet on the 10, discipline, going to let it go, and no. It's the man, not the ball. And as the slide was happening by Zach Vigil, we'll watch closely for the feet here. He's got it, slides across the goal line with that ankle, so that makes it a touchback, and Giants... Get it out at the 20. Although keeping the ball there is really good. If we were playing on Saturdays, some college ball, that would have been clean. Throws, it's the man, not the ball. It's time for Miami to crowd the line of scrimmage. Do not let Eli hand the ball off and control the clock. Left tackle Eric Flowers out because of that ankle, so Justin Pugh, this key moment, has to pop over to left tackle, change to the giant O-line. Manning's gonna roll the opposite way, throw complete to Beckham, just shy of the first down. It's a nice play by Beckham. On the sideline. Watch him start to the flat, then he's gonna push up the back McCain off of him, and he sets down beautifully for a gain of nine. That's a really good call by Ben McAdoo. Play action pass. Dolphins were expecting run. Fooled them. It's Olivier Vernon working off the right side of the Miami defense against the left tackle, Justin Pugh. Played that position when he came out of Syracuse, now moved into guard. Second down run is Jennings for nothing with 4.25 to go. It's a Neville Hewitt tackle. Rookie out of Marshall. Here comes the big boys. Whitlock, 49 at fullback, number 86. Jerome Cunningham checks in at tight end. This has been an area the Giants have struggled. Their short yardage offense. Will Eli hand it to the big back in a two-back set, or will he use play action? This is where the Giants have not performed well this year. Third and short. And he turns. It's a run. First down for Jennings. Huge run to the 31. 
It's going to force Miami to use timeouts, perhaps. That's old school Tom Coughlin right there. Let's get into a two back set. Let's run right behind the key to Whitlock. Back up left guard, Dallas Reynolds, number 61 in the ball game. Justin Pugh has checked in at left tackle. Eric Flowers is out of this game. How about that for having confidence in that left side? Manning checks the formation, maxes the play clock. Goes down shotgun run. Two yards for Jennings. And Dominican Sue needs to get back in this game. That's why he's here. I mean, you got to get out there and find a way to make a play to get this ball back to your offense. Hot night, highest played, paid player in the National Football League. Got to find something in the tank. Dan Campbell timeout, down to one left, trying to put all the eggs in this basket to make the stop here. Eli Manning, his highest completion percentage in a game, just under 79% against Arizona seven years ago out in the desert tonight 86 percent 25 of 29 you mentioned the four touchdowns over 80 percent the Manning family Peyton's had over 80 percent completions 18 times Archie didn't do it Eli hasn't done it in his career and talk about a game where they've thrown it at least 20 times so chance for a record percentage night with completions but more importantly a huge first down awaits the Giants with just one timeout left. He'll throw here. It's complete on the slant for Harris at the 45-yard line with 2.53 to go. It's that catch and release out of the gun. You just can't defend. Sharp slant for the first down, and Eli Manning is on fire. He read the blitz perfectly, got right to his sight adjust. Hard to blitz Eli Manning when he's on to you. Giants a first down away from closing this game out. Miami can get the ball back with around a minute left with no timeouts. If the Giants continue to run it, they can stop it twice the Dolphins. It's Jennings with this carry to midfield. And Miami will take the timeout here at 2-12 with a second down snap. And then after second down, you'll have the two-minute warning come for that third down snap, provided the Giants still pick up a first down here. Miami just looks worn out to me. And Dominican Sue checking back into the game. Jordan Phillips, their rookie nose tackle number 97, looks exhausted, pad levels high. And the Giants look like a team that is far from finished. They're coming off the ball. They're capturing the line of scrimmage. And they're doing what Tom Coughlin wants done. Finish the game in the fourth quarter when you have a lead. This can be a huge confidence builder for the Giants if they can get this done. The receivers on the proper side here. 2-12 left. It's second and five. Fourth Miami's back. out of timeouts. A run here forces the two-minute warning to be the next stoppage. It's Jennings in the middle. Pulled back by Sue at the 49-yard line. And it'll come down to one play here for the Dolphins and the Giants. Two minutes left. Giants lead by seven. That close for a tie in the division. Closing out games hasn't exactly been the Giants' specialty this season as we hit the two-minute warning in Miami. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Levy. Giants playoff push is on right now. Coming up, the GMC postgame report. I'll be joined by Ray Lewis and Trent Dilfer and Steve Young on SportsCenter at night with Scott Van Pelt. Scott, he's rejoined with his old pal Ryan Rosillo. The breakdown the night in the NBA and Scott's take on Pete Rose still not going to the hall. Could be a dance fest, too, as well, Mike. Immediately following the game. Back to you, Giants. All right, Steve, thank you. Giant fans, you know the Dallas game, you know the New England game. And the Giants, will they run the ball in this situation or throw it? A first down will close the business. Miami's out of timeouts. A run takes 45 seconds guaranteed off the clock. Third and three, and they will throw with Manning. It is ruled complete for Beckham for a game-ending first down. Who else? Gutty call by Tom Coughlin. Throwing the football. Looks like a clear catch. 
They're going to look at this upstairs. The previous play is under review. Jake Campbell unhappy with it. They'll review it. If it's a first down, the Giants can end the game. Pulled on the field, it was complete. We looked during the break, didn't look like there was enough to overturn the call on the field. If that is the case, the Giants are three knees away from a first place tie in the division. Greg Rolstead. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. It is a catch and a first down. Dan Campbell was unhappy. He was looking for a push off there. So the Giants went, John, in the pressure moment with their two best players, Manning, Beckham. Ball game. And they went to their signature route. Timing pattern. It's an eight yard little pivot route on the outside that stays on against bump and run. And Eli Manning has been awesome tonight. You don't go 27 out of 31 for 340 and four touchdowns in the NFL with, without being on your game. Giants a couple of knees away from closing this baby out. So the Giants will get this win. It would get them to six and seven. We have a three-way tie in the division. See, the Giants have the undefeated Panthers coming to MetLife on Sunday. Buffalo and Arizona, the opponents for Washington and Philadelphia at home. Dallas is now two games back of three teams. And, of course, the Week 17 closeout with the Giants in Philadelphia. The Eagles have Washington and the Giants, these two division games remaining against the teams that are tied at the top. This loss will eliminate Miami. It will also secure the AFC East title for New England. Eli Manning, best night in terms of completion percentage in his Giants career, 87%. He broke, as a matter of fact, the Giants record. Kerry Collins had an 85% game in terms of completion percentage. So Eli sets the Giants all-time record for completion percentage. And more importantly, John, this team that has not closed held the ball for the final 439 of this. And we have a three-way tie atop the NFC East with three weeks to go. You said it at the beginning, adversity, negativity. It doesn't affect Tom Coughlin. It doesn't affect Eli Manning. They've been through it before. They just will not go quietly. And I'm sure Ron Rivera and the Carolina Panthers respect what they have to do next week. And these longtime friends going to keep those jerseys from the other guy. Landry targeted 18 times. He had 11 catches and 99 yards. But Odell Beckham had seven grabs, 166 yards. And he had the two touchdowns that were the difference maker tonight. Washington, Philadelphia, and the Giants all 6-7 atop the NFCs. Our final score tonight from South Florida, the Giants 31. The Dolphins 24. Sports Center, the GMC postgame all ahead. But in a moment, the Gruden Grinder. And I disagree with John. Come back and find out.